Jackson Show every day, Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 a.m., where you can catch us on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook Live. Plus, from 6.30 to 8, you can get us on WBGX 1570 a.m. That's right, it's the Maze Jackson Show, where every single day we ask the question, Maze said, we out of here. Peace. Bring your body here to me Always sexy as can be
W-I-I-F-T-D-P-M. You are listening to the most dangerous show in the morning. This is What's In It for the Black People Radio. Mays Jackson. Mays Jackson. The most vociferous advocate for black people in the world. For Ruthie Moore, for Ty Stroger, I am the host of the Mays Jackson Show, asking every single day, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them, Mays said, Mayor Lightfoot, man, we ain't accepting that. We ain't accepting that. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Let's get down to business and go ahead and address the facts. Man, Lightfoot seems more lesbian than black. Rahm Emanuel was another case. He was just a tire. 50 closed schools left much to be desired. Police had internet naked on their body cam. They suppressed the footage so it couldn't touch a lot of hands. Reminds me of that 16 shots in that cover-up. Both of them similar, so I went and dug it up. George Floyd killed. A lot of riots happened in the town. South side burned and they wouldn't let them bridges down. Grandmother sick, need a prescription and plus a couple groceries. You won't have to travel just to get it now. COVID-19, now his shit and all the business down. Not enough SBA loans to even give a round. So many failed businesses that you can put them in the path. If you don't survive the pandemic, it's gonna sit you down. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government invested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government invested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Shout out to Willie Wilson. Hope one day you get to send it. We need some different players in the game to handle business. No, too many shady characters like Madigan and Blago. But when you really break it down, it's typical Chicago. City full of gangsters. It's what the land was built on. Same streets with hood legends DNA get spilled on. Carjackers out here lurking, trying to get they steal on. Looking for a block to put them Hellcat wheels on. Let us give bogus appraisals a red line. Car crackers out here getting minimal fair time. And I'm the seal kid. I stay with the pipe. Right. For Illinois gun laws giving minimal rights. Uh-uh. Stay up on the swivel, make sure I'm moving tight. You know Check all of my mirrors when I pull up to the light. I'm Pick my it. homie up from out of town, man. He caught a flight. Right. He was hella nervous, told him, Shorty, sure, this is a way of life. Uh-uh. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government invested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government invested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that built us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Wake up, Chicago. Uh, wake up, world. This is the Mays Jackson show on a Tuesday, blowing up on a Tuesday. It's the Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. That means it's not Monday. We one day away from Hump Day, um, but it is blowing up. That's right on a Tuesday. We gonna blow it up on a Tuesday. First of all, shout out to my man, my homeboy. Well, not my homeboy. I don't know if you can call a doctor your homeboy. But shout out to my man Willie Wilson. Put the smack down yesterday. You know how you be, you know how, Reese, you probably pay spades. You're probably a spades player. You're not probably a bid player. Speaking of spades, we're going to have, I, th- I think I'm going to have this black space and we're going to have us a, a spades tournament. But spa- you, speaking of, uh, you, Reese, yesterday, Dr. Wilson was like, I done hit you with 250000 At First, I hit you with a quarter million gas. My own money. Then I came back at you with a million dollars in gas. With my own money. You trying to spend our money. And I'm going to keep on spending money. I'm not taking the check. And when I get the check, I'm passing that out. I put five milli. He said, I don't know if it's going to. Might, y'all might go check today. It might not be there. But by tomorrow morning, which is today. It's going to be five million in my account. So that's kind of like when you be on space, you know, when you be like, you know, you be licking your fingers to put the cars down because you you need the good slap. I can't do it with the. Can't. What 
ultimate when you lick the back of the car and slap the stain on your forehead. He'd Ooh, be like, he do that one. He did this. He, he, well, see, he couldn't because okay. Dr. Wilson was looking too fresh. He had his makeup together yesterday. He had his line on. He was like, he was ready. And when Dr. Wilson made you, Dr. Wilson made them come to his house. You know his his. Do you know his neighbors be like, really, man? Like, I w- I kind of wish he had his house shoes on when he did it. I wish he would have made the reporters take their shoes off, cause you know Dr. Wilson crib is pretty fly, right? You look over the whole Navy Pier, the whole you dig, right? But I, you think Dr. Wilson made them take their shoes off? Like, y'all take y'all shoes off of my house. Nah, he said, I'll get that clean. It's all right. Y'all come on in. I'll make this big on the He said, I want him to just make him take his shoes off. Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off. I know you got that big old camera. Take your shoes off. Walking around, no shoes. Take the the no shoes in the crib, right? Take your shoes off of my house. I wonder how many people had good socks. Hey, man. Take your shoes off of my house. You know? Imagine how many people that didn't have this. We didn't have good socks. Your feet. We had all the preachers there yesterday, too. Dr. Wilson put it oh, down man. yesterday. Yeah, man. How many Stacy Adams would have been at the door? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me go ahead. Stacy's and Gators. Stacy's and Gators. And they match. You know, you can find you a pair of Stacy Adams almost any color. For sure. Like, For you sure. know, you know what I like when the old man be having the Stacy Adams that got the curl in it, sort of where it's been up yeah, right in the front. Yeah, and then they got the look, but then you can't tell them nothing about them because they be spit shine. Spit shine. So shout out to uh, Dr. Willie Wilson. Uh, I thought Dr. Wilson was going to come in. He's too busy for us today, but he said he'd get us. I gave him two dates. So in the meantime, we're going to be talking to um, another mayoral candidate. Be coming live into the studio. Um, Alderman Ray Lopez of the 15th Ward threw his hat into the ring. Now I'm going to have to ask him, did he come, did he go see Tucker Carlson before me? Right? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, that's how the mayor is national too. They be doing them national shows and then come back and tell the people. So we're going to talk to Ray Lopez today, though. You know, Ray was the one who put us up on the machine gun, Kelly, about the, the toting the machine guns. Do I got some Ray Lopez in there? I'm sure you got some Ray Lopez clips in there. So we're going to have to go through those over one of the breaks because Ray, Ray Lopez will be in that seven. Uh, so y'all make sure Aaron Reese, you make, wake my Lions up because the Lions Den is in full effect at 7 o'clock. So at about 6.50... Eight, give them a good yarn, stretch them on out. Then when we bring our our, our fresh meat in, cause it's, it's this is political season. It's the den. It's time, Reese. You 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 wasn't really you ain't know about the den then, cause we ain't had no real political stuff. But now we going into the season, and so when we became the lions den, you know how you hit a lions den, it's cause we used to eat political candidates alive when they came in this bad boy. And what will happen is they'll be reading the comments too. So, you know, like when you're on regular TV, you just be thinking you sound extra fresh. When you be in the den and you can see the comments, I lost the co-host from that, Reese. Mm-hmm. Like my first co-host, he 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 offended the den. It Actually, he, uh, Kanika Jenkins. He called her like all type of names. And the den went in, and then they went in on his wife, and they went in on his everything. And Reese, then he got mad at me. It was crazy. So I'm just going to tell you, the den be den be sending people off because they be like, they be thinking they good. They be, uh-uh. Nope. So, you can't read the comments. You, gotta you gotta get. Show. You gotta look at me. Don't look at the comments. Like, and what happened is they be, they got their phone. Right, because they be done shared it and all type of stuff. And you know the den, you can't tell the den how to act. Right? So I'm just letting y'all know. 7 o'clock, Ray Lopez in the building. Reese, I was thinking, though, we move to afternoons. We're going to have more guests. And I was just thinking, man. You know we can't really, you know we can't really move anyway to July. Why? The wheels are still... Oh, the wheels are still. Oh, we can move. We can move. Wheels are still. You know, I, you know, I usually this work for me because you know I go out there and I go, you know, do another wheel of steel with the steel. Oh, see how, bro? See, see how the income. See how the see how the Jacksons be doing. See how see that spread of 
See, see the Jackson spread. You see how the Jackson spread be working. See that it just it just be working like that. So then you know how when you put somebody on and they be like, hold on, you you put them on and they want to tell you about the other person, not the person who put you. Also, you want to tell me about. So you don't want to tell me about the Mays Jackson show. You want to tell me about the Wheels of Steel. All right, I see y'all. See how this works. See this I is said both. Of them. I, I understand. Like you know how they but work, how do you, you know? prioritize? Um, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I feel, I feel, I feel like the correct answer is I will always put the Madam Princess. You know, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Madam President. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, w- wouldn't you want me to think about the, the uh, Madam Pr- uh, President first too? No, that's not the good answer. I didn't. <laughs> that's what I said. I'm gonna let you answer. I would have probably, I would have probably opted out. You would probably opted out. I probably would have opted out on that question. I would probably because. You know, because you know I could go home and be salty, and then it'd be like, then you'd be burned up anyway, right? Then I'd just be like, oh. You so, go, you know, I'd be like, man, see how loyalty works? See, because the way we work is how you get to the table, oh, right? Man, so man. the Jacksons would be like, okay, so the first loyalty is to how you got to the table, and the person that is the second beneficiary always knows that the first person remains the priority, right? Because that's that's the check. Like, they wouldn't come to you. They would come to me and say, hey, I got a problem with da-da-da-da-da. Right, right. Right? So your plug, you always maintain the plug. Because the plug, if you diss the plug, but the plug got the ultimate plug, then, and, and you should trust that I'm going to always look out for the best interests of Madam President. Okay. Right. You know, so I, you should always know that I would never leave, Madam President. It was a trick question as well. No, it wasn't a trick question. It a trick it's question. not a trick question at all. It's very simple. Stick with the people that got you to the table, right? Because no matter how many other people you meet, the people that they brought you to the table with knew you first, knew them first. So you always got to remember that. Like I'm, I'm gonna try and start sharing some game because. I think they done mixed it all up for everybody. And so sometimes people be confused and you outsmart yourself, right? So anyway, that's a whole nother story. And, of course, Reese, I want you to make sure that she gets to where she has to go. Uh, But, you know, my monkey don't stop the show. That means so we got to figure this whole thing out. Look, y'all, it's the Maze Jackson show. Anyway, I was telling you, if I came on at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we probably a lot more people probably come. I was thinking about, Man, what if we was broadcasting from like downtown or something? Like outside. Mm-mm. That's all right though. That's okay, cause I'm. That's all right though. I'm gonna be te- I'm, y'all. I be talking. I be quiet, but I be talking again. So we gonna talk about it all. It's the Mace Jackson show. I think we might make that switch though in May, dog. I don't know if I could go all the way to June. This I'm. I'm starting to. I'm starting to be like, hold on. Three o'clock sounds a lot better. I still, Tanil keep telling me I should take one to three. Yeah. I, you know, I took one to three. I just probably just take all the you take the air out the universe. Wouldn't be no space in the water. So I'm like, uh, you know, I ain't really that petty. I am actually, but I'm not. So, um, anyway, it's the Mace Jackson show. I've been talking smack, but I ain't really said what's up. So hey, what's up to my man DJ Reese the Ruler in the building? DJ Reese the Ruler, how you feeling today? That's about the best. You already know the rest. It's a good Tuesday, man. On a Tuesday? Yeah, we Reese, did. I came outside, and your car was gone. Y'all, like, switched up and moved around, and I was like, Dad, yesterday I came in, left, came back, and I, I I sat down for a minute, got to writing, and I came out, and I was like, Dad, I thought I was going to run into y'all. Then it didn't happen that way. So I just sent you. I seen, I seen the, the, I don't even know what you call, yo. That's a. That's, that is, you know what, I didn't like the car at first, but right now, let me tell you, man, $25 filled my tank, and I'm good to go for about five days. So, yeah, I don't like it, but it at the gas rate right now, I don't know what the car, I don't even know what, what that car is. <laughs> I just know it's a Mitsubishi. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you. I pulled, so you know I went to the old school this weekend, right? So you know I've been driving a winter car. But I had to take, you know, I had to take the Porsche to the old school. I, you know, you got to come back to the old school with the car. I realized that the winter car eats way more gas than the Porsche. Like, the winter car, that bad boy is like, that's a 
that's like a buck twenty five to fill up. And you get about five, four and a half to five days off of it. I can go about seven on a full in the Porsche. I'm going to have to put the winter car up, man. And I was just thinking about the old school, man. But the thing with the old school is <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to tow it to somewhere and put it. The gas in that summer gun. It'd be like, what? they didn't have no gas economy back then. Yeah, we hate 67 that. Impala SS. 67 Impala, because they gas was 67 cents. <laughs> it's like every time you step on the gas, it'd be like, you could watch the gas tank go like this. Like, you could, because it's a bobber in there. So it'd be, oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm just going around the block. I'll park that mug. All right, y'all, it's the Maze Jackson Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson, DJ Reese the Ruler. We are in the building on a Tuesday. Reese, uh, why don't you uh, get the soul plane up, up, up and away. Let's get it up off of 60 feet, 60,000 feet up off the ground. Uh, shout out to my man, Brother Anthony Muhammad. Uh, Brother Anthony will be in the studio with us on Thursday. He up from Atlanta. We might have to uh, bless him in while he here or something. You know what I'm saying? We might have to get us a, get the, Get, give him a, a, a charter to take back to Atlanta with him and build around it. But we're going to figure that out. But, Reese, it's going to be a good week, man. I'm excited about all the stuff Dr. Wilson said he's going to come in some point this week. Uh, we got Ray Lopez today. Uh, check this out. Did you see Ghostbusters, man? They ghostbusting the ghost gun. Like, it's all over the news right now. Ghost guns, ghost guns, ghost guns. I was like, who cares? Like, I feel like it's just a new hype. Like, you ain't finding the people with the serial numbers on the gun. So why do we care about the ones that ain't got none? And I guess it's just a... I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to let that be. Uh, Did you see Phillies bringing the masks back? COVID is popping off. I think we ain't... I don't think they're going to make it a big deal anymore. I think they're not going to put it on the news. I think they're going to just be like, flu, COVID, COVID, flu. But they talking about you can get COVID from the animals now. Like, they saying it's deer COVID, and next you're going to be, like, dog COVID. This made me think of the planet of the apes, man. Like, I, and I, and I know I'm not supposed to say it, but I'm I'm starting to feel a way about China. For real, bro. Like, for real. Like, they keep, it, every time you see something happen in Shanghai, next thing you know, we on. Am I allowed to even say that? Because for real, Reese. And you know China be telling people you can't say nothing. They just shut the whole country. They just lock your building. You can't go out no more. Crazy, man. Um, What is going on with this tax bill thing? Okay, so y'all know that I'm really not. Have y'all noticed that I have not been talking a lot about the... uh? assessor's race, like you probably think I would be talking about it every single day. But you know that the issue is that um, the white Karen is going to try and make me an issue. And so I'm trying to just be cool. But this thing about the the property tax bills being late is something that I think we got to start paying attention to. I think we here at What's In It For The Black People Media or at our other location were very instrumental in the election of Fritz Kagan. I think that we brought him on quite a bit. We tried to share his information, and it does seem as though um, he has not lived up to his promises to us specifically. I would love uh, – do y'all think he, we could get him to come in and talk? Probably not, right? It's going to be interesting because it's like, hey, Reese, I don't need to tell you something, man. You know he be uh he be crowding the first lady when when he be out. So I'm gonna be telling y'all, man, I'm gonna need y'all to be checking him out, right? Cause he be crowd. You know, like it's like that whole big dude getting all close. Like, what you gonna do, homie? Back up. Get some. Sp- you see where she at? Then you gonna go stand close and be like towering over. You know, hey, man. Oh, Lord. 
I'm just going to tell y'all. Y'all know I'm trying to be cool. So I'm going to need y'all to be watching and paying very close attention. Does that make sense? Like, the whole thing is they want to they want to try and trigger me. So I, I you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I got to be judicious. But I just can't have dude trying to be, you know, that trying to pull the Steve Wright joint. Can't be trying to pull that. Can't be doing that. All right, y'all. It's the Maze Jackson Show. Um, Oh, also, I got a press release. Speaking of Cook County Assessor, uh, Carrie Steele just completed her. Uh, hold on. Let me read it. Because I got a. Pr- they sent me a press release, Reese. It says, Carrie Steele becomes a certified Illinois assessing officer as part of her bid to become the next Cook County Assessor. Uh, apparently, Cook County. Uh, should I read? Can I read the press release? Will y'all be mad at me if I read it? Man, read that. Read it. Read it. You sure? I don't want to get in trouble because no, y'all be. You can read it. Just, it's just news. It's already written. All you doing is reading out loud. All right. It says, uh, Carrie still has become a certified assessing officer after completing coursework with the Illinois Property Assessment Institute, the premier designation for property assessment professionals in Illinois. Every assessor in Illinois is required to get the official certification except for the Cook County assessor. Carrie still went ahead and completed Months of coursework, now she can be prepared on day one to address the chaos and mismanagement Assessor Kagi has overseen during his time in office. Fritz Kagi is a millionaire, did not become certified until after he was elected. As a woman, my experience and credentials are often held to a higher standard than my male counterpart, said Carrie Steele. Just the other day in a, t- in a forum with Cranes, Fritz Kagi questioned my experience, even my interest in this job. Let it be clear that I've been committed since day one, and I've already done more to prepare myself with a, over a decade of, of government experience and this certification, and this certification more than Fritz ever did. Reese, I'll be kind of, it's kind of tough, you know, watching and not being able to, like, Really, 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 really go. Whew. So I just want to send a big shout out to uh, President Carrie K. Steele because um, she completed. Um, that assessment, Reese, she like official official. Y'all send out the shout to the lady. All right, y'all, it's the Maze Jackson Show. Um, when we come back, I want to ask the social media question of the day. And we got to kind of stay somewhere close to on time because we got a 7 o'clock guest and I want to be right on it. It is the Maze Jackson Show. We'll be back. The Maze Jackson Show. We'll be back after this break. Introducing your trusted source for high quality black emojis, better known as black emoji. We believe black is beautiful and that beauty should be reflected in the digital market. Now there is an app that does just that, starting with Black Greek Letter Organizations. Black Emoji D9 offers more than an emoji app. It is a cultural experience of black excellence. Download the app in the Apple or Google Play Store to access a specially curated catalog of emojis representing the divine nine. Use the emojis to celebrate Black Greek events, acknowledge current events, support social causes, and learn about esteemed Black Greek members who blaze the trail of Black history. A portion of every subscription goes toward a scholarship fund specifically for members of Black Greek letter organizations to help keep the legacy alive. Download the Black Moji app today. And now, traffic and weather. Yo, who says devotion has to be sad? Yo, check this out. The Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. I want He's making me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. God's going to turn it around. Come all the way with me. Good 
morning. What's in it for the Black People Media family? The time is now 6.36 a.m. And I'm Rich the Ruler with your Chicagoland area traffic and weather report as we head over to the Kennedy. All head to the loop will be 23 minutes, 19 minutes outbound to O'Hare on the Eaton's inbound. Deerfield till it's changed 31 minutes. Exchange to Deerfield will be 27 on the Eisenhower. Thorndale to the loop, 36 minutes, 28 minutes back out to Thorndale. On the Stevenson from I-355 to the Dan Ryan, 44 minutes, 30 minutes outbound. While the Bishop Ford is 34 minutes, I-80 to the Dan Ryan and 26 minutes to I-80. The Dan Ryan is 19 minutes to the loop, 13 minutes to 95th. On DuSable Lakes, your drive south, 55th to Jackson will be 7 minutes. Jackson to 55th will be 8. On the north side of things, Randolph to Bryn Mawr and Bryn Mawr to Randolph will be 8 minutes in both directions. Today's weather, it is currently 46 and sunny. Today will be a high of 68 with a low of 45. Expect rain in the late night. I'm Reese the Ruler. Happy Tuesday and now back to the Maze Jackson Show. Listening to the Maze Jackson show, I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my man DJ Reese the Ruler in the building. Hey man. I told y'all it was going to start. So we're gonna have a um conversation. Look, y'all, it's the Maze Jackson show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. I got my man DJ Reese the Ruler in the building. Whew. Reese. I'm about Oh, dang, I didn't even do what I was supposed to do. All right, shout out to the center. To the, <laughs> Let me back up. It is 6.30. It's a little about 6.38. Uh, shout out to uh, the listeners, the Saints on WBGX, 15.70 a.m. Um, the Saints on um, 15.70 a.m. You join us every day at 6.30 a.m. You go with us from 6.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh, and then let me say what's up to the centers. They join us at 6 o'clock and they go to 9 o'clock every day. Um, it, uh, you can listen to us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch if you are one of the sinners. If you're the Saints, catch us on 1570 AM, uh, WBGX 872-259-7474. That is the number to call. And I want you to call today because I've really been thinking about, um, I've really been thinking about separate but equal. Separate but equal, I was thinking about segregation and separation. So, Reese, do me a solid. I want you to hit the, bo- hit the, hit the big voice because I'm ready. You ready? Let's it's see. time for the social media question of the day. Is separation acceptable? And I want you to give us a call, 872-259-7474, So, Reese, I've been thinking lately about wanting to do things I've been thinking lately about, like, black people first, black only. And I was wondering, is it acceptable to have, is it acceptable to want to live in a separate neighborhood? 
not a segregated neighborhood, but a separate neighborhood. Like, is it wrong for me to want to live in a, a black neighborhood? Right? Is it acceptable? Uh-oh, hold on. The hotline is ringing. Uh-oh, I got the hotline ringing. I got uh, I got I got the big the man with the biggest willy in the city right now. The 5 million dollar man. Uh he must have heard that since he didn't have time for me today that somebody else came in here. So I know he probably came in to lock his spot down. So I'm going to go ahead and let him say something real quick on the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the five million dollar. Well, I got. I can't even call you the five million. I gotta say, you six point two five million. You beat Steve Austin because you had a six point two five million. Because you put five million in your account yesterday, then you dropped a million on gas and you kicked it off with a quarter million. So let me say, what's up to the six point two five million dollar man who announced yesterday that he is all in. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the good Reverend Dr. Willie Wilson. Dr. Wilson, speak to the people. All right, Dr. Jackson, how you doing? Dr. Wilson, I see. Dr. Wilson, now you know I got Ray Lopez coming in because you ain't had no time for me. Because now every, you done made me hot. You got me hot out here. Everybody like, oh, Dr. Wilson coming to the Mays Jackson show. Let me beat him to the punch. I know I ain't CNN. I know I ain't Fox News. I know I ain't International 2579. But please promise the black folks that you will give us the chance to get you live in the studio. Well, when you went in there now, like Thursday or Wednesday? How about Thursday morning? How about oh, Thursday Wednesday? How about Thursday morning? Fine. Thursday morning, fine. We're fine. Thursday morning. Now look, Thursday morning. I got brother Anthony Muhammad coming in here, so we'll both be in here, or you can come Wednesday. Either one. All right. All right okay. Well, well, Wednesday. Wednesday be good. I uh, mean, I'll, I'll, I'll come uh, this Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? All right, uh, see. Okay. okay. I, I will, no, no. I'll come uh, Wednesday. What time? What time? Seven o'clock. It might be early, Doctor Jackson. Hey, hey, Doctor Wilson. That's when I got the church folks. That's when I got the church uh, folks uh, on the. Uh, okay. you, you know, I'm on the radio during that time, so I so want you to get the map. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock tomorrow morning. I would be there. Lord it, will, I would be there. Seven o'clock. All right, now, Doctor Wilson. Real quick, tell the people what happened yesterday. What you want to say? Because I know my man on his way up here. So go ahead. And I want you to go ahead. And because you know, Dr. Wilson's one of the first ones with us. So, Dr. Wilson, five, six. Dr. Wilson, where are you getting all this money, man? Well, we work hard <laughs> for it. You know, we work 16 hours a day, you know, to work hard for it, you know? I, Dr. <laughs> look, Wilson. I, I would tell you that all tomorrow morning, but look, we made a mistake. As I said yesterday, we made a hell of a mistake supporting that lady, you know? The mayor. We made a hell of a mistake. And that she's been bad news since she's been out here. And I'm not going to just say, talk about her all during a, a, uh, the run here, but uh, we're going to talk positive, how to fix the stuff, you know. But she, you know, to like communication, crime is way, way, way out of proportion. Um, you know, the police officer here uh, that been laid off because they're not vaccinated, I think people have a choice to make whether they want to do it or not. And if they, if they test positive, don't let them work. If they come back and test negative, let them work. Those are the people who put their lives on line for all of us every day. Now, and and th th those kind of things, CTA, people getting robbed on CTA. You need armed Chicago policemen officers on CTA. You know, you, you need to stop all this foolishness stuff and deal with it. And you need to be able to talk to people, communicate with people, and fix the doggone problem. And, and here's the other thing, too. Well, what is she doing for, for the community? She gave all the marijuana places to 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 all uh, white, no no African-American, and then lock them up and get them out and then sell to them and they can't own them. You know, that's crazy. The economic part of the contract and job need to be put in place. We need to reflect all the Chicago citizens without leaving black and brown people behind. You know, so they they entitled to have the same as anybody else. 
So so we're tired of that tired of that mess. So I'm I'm going to fix it all. I'm going to fix it with the help of the of, of the people there. And when you make decisions, you got to make decisions with talking to people. Because one person cannot have everything right for six, seven million, a million, a million people in the city of Chicago. One person cannot fix that. You have to be able to communicate with people, economic, education, uh, crime. The people have to fix it with you taking leadership, but communication with them. Dr. Wilson, so look, because this is what I don't want you to do, man. I don't want you to give me the whole show for tomorrow because I got to save something up. Right now you're going to make old boy nervous because he coming up in here too. Now look, Dr. Wilson, I'm telling you, man, um, y'all got the, y'all got the, look, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at Quigley. Y'all already going to split the black and white vote. He going to compromise with Dr. Wilson. I see a path, but we're going to talk about all this. Uh, tomorrow. Now you tell the people one more time. You coming in tomorrow? I want them to hear it. They listening to you. You gotta text me your address now. Okay, I, Doctor Wilson, I attack you. To, I text you the address, and we'll have you in here tomorrow, seven o'clock sharp. Seven o'clock sharp. In fact, I'm gonna be there before seven. All right, and if you feel like you want to bring breakfast, we won't be mad. All right, Dr. Wilson, <laughs> it's our man, Dr. Wilson, on the live line. Hey, Dr. Wilson, we appreciate you. We'll talk to you live in the studio tomorrow. Hey, y'all, Dr. Willie Wilson in the building tomorrow. Look, look, Reese, the people's got to talk to us. You know what I'm saying? They coming through, though. They like I'm just saying, like, through. you know it's going to be people. Uh, you think the mayor going to ever come talk to us? <laughs> We can't play the theme song. Yeah, see, see, you know what the issue is. She might come, but, but Maze, I've been here long enough to know that somehow the leprechaun background screen is gonna suddenly pop up by mistake. No, it won't. I would. I, you know what? Can I tell you what? Like this, and and if you pay attention to everybody that we've interviewed, even, and I've been extending this to everybody, right? Like, I do want. Um, everybody to feel like they have the opportunity to talk, right? I do feel like everybody has the op- should have the opportunity to come here and like have a conversation. You know, it's like think about this, Reese. I sat down with Tony Preckwinkle. Now it was too late, right? She was like the last day, and she was just trying to avoid getting mollywopped. And I tried to build a rapport and a relationship. I I think that. Um, I know I make it tough, but I do think that we have a, a very, I do feel like we have a very um, viable group of people. And I think in a minute, nobody's going to be able to organ, uh, be out, be able to ignore us because we've got black people first. And uh, that's going to get me back to our social media question of the day. Give us a call, 872-259-7474. Reese, I was thinking about... So I was at the Soho house, right? And I actually liked the place, but I was just thinking, like, why isn't the, is it possible to have a social club for black people only? Like, could you do that? Like, without it being offensive or without it being, like, would you be offended if there was a whites only social club? Heck yeah. You would? Heck yeah. Really? Heck yeah. No, I believe anybody but white people can make a so listen, man. What about Italian do. social club? And I respect that. What I about so any, uh, what, anybody but white people? Okay, so let me ask a question. So let let's not so I feel like so if it was a, a Greek American club, uh Italian American club, could there be a not white American club, but could there be the Mexican American can you is it okay to organize separately? Or to want to have a place that is only for your own people. Now, I could kind of see you saying the white thing. Because because they everything is white only anyway for the most part. But I'm saying, I don't think that there would be a problem with a ethnicity-based club. Where it's only those people. Not that you would get jumped on for coming into it. But that you had to be the guest of someone of that persuasion to come. Like you couldn't just walk in off the street. 
Like, I don't feel like, and so Reese, you say it could be anybody but white. Like, but it could be, could it be the Czechoslovakian uh, club? Where it's only Czechoslovakia? Well, not only, they like but Polish or something like that. I, Polish. Polish. Like, could it be a Polish American club where Polish people hang out? It just can't be white. Correct. So, you, but it could we be the what that was already. Okay. okay. <laughs> we, we, we 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 watched what that was already. No, sir. <laughs> so I am I am curious to know: Can you be separate and not segregated? Does that make sense? Like, I feel like sometimes I sit in, like, say, I, again, I'm going to use the Soho house, but say I'm sitting at the Soho house and you want to have a conversation and there's, like, some great brains in the world. But then you'd be like, man, like, the other people are listening to our secret plan. Like, where can you go? Like, I, I feel like... I want to go be able to go somewhere and talk and talk about black issues without feeling like I'm spilling the beans or that I'm giving the ops the opportunity. Like, is that wrong? Give us a call, 872-259-7474. Can you have something that is black only in Chicago? And would you be offended if there was a like, what if there was Ukrainian Ukrainian only? And when I say only, I don't mean you can't come. I mean that you can't come without a guest, being the guest. Like, is Chinatown segregated or is it separate? Like, do they, did we put them there or did they say we're going there? Is Beverly segregated or separated? It's not that you can't live there. But I do think there's a certain level of pride of living there. That they start off as segregation and, and now it's separation. Mm-mm. Well, like you can start off like you know how you know how like you know how like they put the blacks or something like, you know what I'm saying? So it started out as segregation, like I'm gonna put the blacks here. You know, and, and like now it's like separate. See, I feel like though, but they they put us in a place and then target us. They bomb it. Like they put you in a place and be like, take all the resources out of it. Whereas like in Chinatown, like when the old girl took Chinatown, she like, now build us a high school. Us. They like, y'all got Harper down there. But we want, and I, I guess my question is, is it wrong to want to be separate without being segregated? Give us a call, 872-259-7474. Like, and if we said something was black only, how do you respond to someone saying, well, what if we said white only? Which I think, Reese, you already nailed. I think that, Black is kind of our descriptor in America, right? So, like, if you have the Italian-American, you can celebrate your ethnicity, right? White doesn't allow you to celebrate your ethnicity. It is the celebration of superiority. But if you break it down, so if there's an Irish-American club, right, I'm not mad at that. But if you say I'm the white American club, you like, Right? So can there be a place where black people can have their own without saying, without being accused of, re- I don't want to say reverse racism, but can, can you do that? Like, do you, are you offended if you, at the, that the fact that there's an Italian American club? I'm not offended at all because I believe that everybody, because because our our like our culture doesn't align with them, so they may want something different. You know, like we all went through a, a different struggle. That, you know, they didn't go through a struggle that we did, or like vice versa and stuff like that. So we don't know what the Italian Americans want. You know, like like we don't have no clue because we were worried about what African Americans or Blacks want. So like I don't have no problem with other you know other races because you know like starting there, 
own organization and trying to look out for their people. Like if the China, if the Asians come over here from Asia, we, we don't, you know, like the Asians should have their own thing that revolves around them to feel comfortable to, you know, like carry on their traditions and stuff like that. So I don't have a problem at all. But that white's only, no, I, I just went to Right, I see you. I see you. <laughs> nah. uh, Temple Rael says we're already separate and segregated. See, I think we're segregated. We're not separated. We didn't pick. Right. We didn't say, OK, we're going to do this. This is where we were forced and we didn't take control of it. So let's say, like Reese said, it may start out segregated, but Chinese took over and made it separated. Correct. Yeah. And they cleared the land and then they started expanding out. Carla, you're on the Maze Jackson show. Can we be separate and not segregated? Caller, you're on the Maze Jackson show. James say yes. James, Je- you supposed to say you supposed to say maze, maze, maze. I did when it beat. Okay. Maze, maze, <laughs> maze. How you doing this morning, my brother? I'm good, man. What? <laughs> you got to think about it, bro. We've been separate. Everybody's been segregated. We're the most segregated city in the country. So. What you basically what you saying? You preach it to the choir. So, like the Serbians and 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 the uh, and everybody else have always had their own little clique. We're the only ones that try to open up and be friendly to everybody else, where everybody else is closed ranks. Especially the the Chinese community, they keep their money circulating within them. They keep everything about them. All they wealth, you know, we was the only ones where. We were stripped of our culture coming here. Everybody else was able to bring their culture from the Latinos to the Chinese to the Serbians to the Russians. They were able to bring whatever they had from their country that they were quote unquote fleeing from because some went, most of them immigrated over here because something bad was happening in their own country. So, us, I, I would love to see it. I would, I, I would love to see our own Wakanda. But it's so much bickering and 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 infighting that soon as soon as somebody brings somebody in, we we know once we close ranks, somebody gonna say, "Well, this is my white friend right here. He's cool. Come on in." And nigga, once again, we infiltrate. <laughs> so I was just thinking about that. Like, could you have a blacks only social club? Like, could you do that? And well, and you know, like, and oh, can definitely, I- we can. We can, bro. I feel like it would be but a how point. I, but the, what, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm listening to you. Oh, okay. But we can. But once again, our own people going to get us infiltrated. Hmm. It's, 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 it's sad, bro. I love my people, man. I wouldn't trade y'all for the world. My black women, I wouldn't give y'all up for nothing. But we have to close ranks. And be steadfast about it. We have to. Yeah, Everybody man. else is doing it. How come we can't do it? Okay. And real quick, man, for your uh, carburation problem on your old school, go to fuel injection, bro, and you and you'll be get better gas mileage. Do a throttle body injection, or you could do a multi port. The throttle my body looks more old school, where it looks like a they have some uh, fuel injection units now that look just like carburetors but they're actually fuel injected. You can go that way for your old school and you still be balling and you'll get better gas mileage. You know what? Thanks, James. I'm going to have to get in a car club so some because I don't know nothing about cars, so I think the dude be getting over on me. He just be like, man, you got to get the dude. I'll be like, Bruh. I'm still like, come on, man. Let me get this car on the road. Thanks, James. Man. I appreciate you, man. Hey, it's the Maze Jackson Show. We got anybody else on the line? Let's take the call. Call you on the Maze Jackson Show. Can we have our own separate place without being segregated byron here good morning byron you early byron what you by, by, and yeah, you been, hey, hey mr vice president you kind of chill too i you ain't you've been low-key byron i think them ladies wore you out in brazil man no it's the inflation number coming up today i get get, get ready for the cnbc information <laughs> anyway okay hey um for us to get together I believe so hardly with the, the call to just call. I mean, all his points are good, good and critical. All we have to do is to, to do it is to say African American. 
the Hispanics do Hispanics, right? Uh-huh. Everybody do the, the language. We, we, we don't call it black. We just call it uh, Af- African club. The African club. See, we can't call it the That's African club. Right. But see, but see, we can't call it the African club because you know, Byron, the Africans okay. don't treat us the same. And I think you yeah, know with this yeah, whole yeah, Ados yeah, thing going true. on. I so did. we got to Now I see you may want to call it the African American club, but I think we trying to get something a little right. stronger. And I think they. So I think it's a lot going on in that space. Uh, but we, I think you're right though, yeah, Byron. Yeah. So we gotta, we gotta. You maybe we call it the Black Israelites club. That's what Bob would want to call it. In right, Jacob. Something, something of that nature, right, to get it wrong. So just in case my brain somebody outside of that, we can say, hey, well, this is not for them. So can I just ask, but, anyway, them, but, but Byron, biggest, go, but do we, see, I yes. feel like, why do we got to make an excuse for us? That's all I'm saying. Okay, but go ahead. It's because of the infiltration, though, the infiltration. Okay. Black folks always want to bring somebody else into the damn club that shouldn't be there. That's but true. They, oh, we are free, but we 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 we, we want to be together. We want to be we want to be we unite with other people. Oh, we unite with who? For what? Why? We ain't getting nothing from them. But anyway, my biggest question is: Why can't white folks have their own damn club? Why is it a problem for us? I think he. If you ever go to his, have you ever go to the Hispanic community? Everything is Hispanic. They don't give a damn of white folks, black folks, and nobody folks. They hide their own, doing their own thing. You don't hear them complaining about they, they need this, they need that. They just do it. Just do it. Nike. This is like Nike, man. That's good stock to own, too. But anyway, yeah. I mean, that's what we need to do. We just need to do what's best for us and just keep moving. All right, Mar- forget about that white stuff. Will you, will, uh, so let me ask a question, Byron. Will you join the, um, if we start a black social club, will you join? Will you be a member? Yeah, I could be a member. All right, that's what I'm talking about, Byron, because we're going to have us a black-only social club. You watch. It's the Maze Jackson Right, and just keep moving. Just move it. Move it until somebody stop it. Keep moving. Why keep they got to stop it, Byron? We know they're going to. See, that's what I'm saying. We no, can't I'm have just them. saying before, you know, there's, all, there's always somebody going to find a lawsuit or some kind of crap and just give you some bad information. Some of this club is all black and this gym is discriminated against other people. Who cares about them? Just keep moving in the direction we need to go to. That's all. Uh, you sound like Big Brother Kane. He said, get with those who want to get with you. All right, Byron, I appreciate you, there man. You it's the Maze Jackson Show. Anybody else? We got one more call, and then we're going to be talking to, coming back, we're going to be talking to uh, Alderman Ray Lopez. He is a candidate for mayor. You saw Willie Wilson heard he was coming, so he had to put his put his marker down. But what, let me take this last call. Caller, can we have our own separate place for black people? You know, you know, yes, we Oh, Probably what's can. up, Israel? Uh-oh, you about to give me a lecture on what we call ourselves. But come on, Israel, what's yeah, going man, on? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to mind my own business chilling, and you're like, <laughs> um, black Israel, like what Bob would say. So I'm trying to think what you're talking about me. Now you're going there. Yeah, I am. I know you, you would tell us. Me? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my slave name, Bob. I'm not Bob. I wasn't, I'm not Bob to tell you over and over. My bad, man. Israel. I'm going to keep it real. Now I'm Prince your host of Israel. Now I'm going to be thinking. Prince your host of Israel. Bob is my slave name. Black is a color. We are the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. I never said black. You never heard me say I want to be a black Israelite club. That's some guys on the East Coast be saying. Let's be clear. Okay. I've been nice. I've been giving you the milk. Now I got to give you the steak. Okay. I ain't want to force feed you. We are the Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew is the language. Israel is the land. The Jews stole our land. Hollywood stole our identity. That's why we kill each other and all that. We don't know who we are. We lost in the wilderness of North America. But I ain't going to force too much down here. So, because we do got something that all, uh, is all black. The jails. Oh, damn. We got some white people came and they toured the white people through climbing jail from England somewhere. They were like, yeah, man, okay. Where y'all lock up the white people at? <laughs> that would probably be funny, but it's serious. I'm saying, <laughs> man, let's get it. <laughs> They say, okay, they took, they took some English people they were still in the county jail a couple years, about 10, 20 years ago. I'm like, yeah, okay. They looked at them county sheriffs or whoever it was, Dart or somebody. They said, okay, now where do y'all lock up the white people at? Oh. So People not playing with us, man. We're at war. So how do we get yeah. our separate? Can we have our own separate? Yeah. You see, the Chinese got their own. China, Chinese got the land and the language. Germany got the land and the language. They stole our identity. That ain't the Palestinians' land over there. 
that ain't none of them people is laying over there. That's our land over there. So what do we do? You know what? This is a, a further conversation. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do this conversation. That's what I'm trying to say. I was trying to lay down my my business. So I said, let me call in. He come over. That's the boss. See, man. I, and, <laughs> hey, let me call. I just want to Did you talk sure. to the president though? Because we we at war with related Midwest. Did you talk to the president? They just expected what's in it for the black people. We got a meeting. We got a meeting on this on uh Thursday, on Wednesday. So we'll talk about it. All right, John. No, is, uh, I'm gonna I'm just get. I brother Jacob call in and give his way. You know, we, a few Israelites gonna call in and talk to you. That's when we had to take over. You might have to have an Israelite takeover one day on your hour. We might. You let everybody else for a week I'm, come I'm, in. I'm not for a week, but I will definitely do that. I definitely will do that. I've been spending. They've been sending me emails. No, uh, all right, we out of here. Look, y'all. When we come back, we are going to be talking to 15th Ward Alderman turned mayoral candidate Ray. Lopez in the building. Reese, do you did you wake up the lines? I told you get the lines woke, cause it's time for the lines, Dan. And then I, I do you got any Ray Lopez quotes in there? Like I know we got some Ray Lopez quotes in there. So we're gonna we why don't you find the one about the people walking down the streets and we're gonna come back after that. Yo, it's just a Maze Jackson show. We will be back. <laughs> The Maze Jackson Show. We'll be back after this break. If I tell them to blow, I keep that metal stuff. That's how we buy this Chicago. Alderman Lopez, welcome back to the Maze Jackson Show. The mayor has a very peculiar way she's dealing with this, and I'm trying to understand why does it seem like we're handling this with kid gloves. The reason that she's not going after the root cause, which is gangs, the reason she's not calling out the silent enablers, as I tweeted out the other day, is because those are many of the same people that she relied on to get elected. I'm talking about the not-for-profits, those that reach out for grants and try to be the intermediaries in a community to try and bridge some of these anti-violence groups, things of that nature. These organizations that say they're trying to build bridges oftentimes are the ones that are enabling the gang lifestyle and allowing it to go unchecked and not holding accountable the individuals causing the violence in the neighborhoods. Those same partners, which she funds, which she relies on, were unceremoniously all pimping themselves out at a press conference, Ooh. saying that nobody said a word about gangs, but what they did say is that we need more money for the programs that we offer to help stop the violence. And clearly, for more money, Money to go to organizations that are working against the residents of the city of Chicago. Alderman, how did y'all approve $37 million to go to one ward for a violence prevention? $37 million? I don't think there's been a $37 million investment in anything black. When these amendments to the budget and when these programs come before us, and I've asked the last time that these were proposed by the administration, what metrics are we using to ensure that everyone with their hand out was not still enabling gangbangers in the middle of the night? And it oftentimes have intervened on behalf of gangbangers, particularly in the Latino community. When you see in other communities, like the black community, when you start doling out contracts to, say, Metropolitan Family Services, and now they're responsible for doling out to organizations to come into neighborhoods like, for example, West Englewood, contract out to organizations that have no connection to a community, build no bridges to a neighborhood, but get $300,000 to stop violence. The most dangerous show in the world. Yeah. Ruthie Mo, Reese the Ruler, Mae Jackson, Jackson. This is the reparations interlude. We not asking, we demanding. So go on, make my payments. Ha 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 ha. Tell the government to cut them reparations, make them ha 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 ha. Not no SBA loans, just run the bread, make it ha 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 ha. Tell the government to cut them reparations, make them ha 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 ha. Ooh, and check bread. it out. First drug lord was President Nixon. Yeah. Over office was the trap house where he was tipping. Back. Got the drugs from Nicaragua and gave us crack. Uh -huh. Declared war on blacks. Man, tell him to cut the check and tried to make it seem like a revolution. Uh -huh. CIA was the corner boys for distribution. You know we could tear this country in half for retribution. Uh -huh. But I'd rather get some restitution, so tell, tell him, him to, to cut the check. check. John Singleton, man, he already told y'all. Uh -huh. He broke it down for you when he made snowfall. They locked us all up. 
up and created whole laws. So send a message like a cold call. Tell them to cut the check. Look, we built this city. We built this city. Back. Put this country together and gave them hella aid. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Over 400 years. Been punching the clock, but yeah, we still ain't got paid. Look, they paying the immigrants. They pay the Jews. Executive orders, man, they made the rules. I want my 40 acres. You can save the mule. Because as of right now, we getting played for the fool. You know Look, sterilization, Tuskegee experiment, Rosewood, Japanese internment. Come on, come on. Was all paid out from the government. We waiting on our turn. We definitely earned it. So make my payment. Ha, 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 ha. Tell the government to cut them reparations. Make them ha, 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 Not no SBA loans. Just run a bread. Make it ha, 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 Tell the government to cut them reparations. Make them ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, not no stimulus checks, just run the bread, make it hot. Wake up, Chicago! Oh, wake up, world. This is the Maze Jackson Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my man DJ Reese, the ruler in the building. And y'all know uh, what time it is. Uh, Reese, wake them lions up, man. It is time. We are in the lion's den. We in the lion's den. Uh, here with us today is the 15th Ward Alderman, uh, Ray Lopez. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all, straight up. Alderman Lopez and I did not start out on the best of terms. Um, but I think sometimes over time in politics, you know, what do they say? Politics makes strange bedfellows. Not that we've ever been bedfellows. Um, I don't know what that means. But what I am going to say is that during the uprisings, we found a unique alliance because while no one wanted to talk about it, there was an underground war being waged on the black community. If you recall, the genesis of what's in it for the black people media revolved around the assault of black people during the uprisings. And a unique component of it was the fact that the city, Susan Lee, um, Mayor Lightfoot, the public safety team, was hiring uh, community outreach groups that were also, by some cases, harboring street organization members who were then waging war on black, innocent black people who just happened to be going through their community. And through our connection, and actually through Alderman Lopez's city council floor speech where he told her he used some colorful language. Quite frankly, Alderman, I don't see if they got the cramp. Fr quite frankly, Alderman, you're full of shh. That should be somewhere in there. Look at Ray Lopez, full of shh and all of that good stuff. But in that process, he described... Uh, Latino gang members roving the streets with assault rifles looking to assault black people. And we were told to not talk about it anymore. I was actually told that if I said the mayor's name again, um, if I was, uh, if I, if a caller called in that I was to hang up. And if you remember people were calling in telling us about the stories and it was like, I had the option to shut up or to walk. And I walked and we started here. So, while I recognize, and we're going to get into all of it, I think that in politics, no permanent friends, no permanent enemies. And I think we found an unlikely um, ally on that issue. And then I'd also talk about a little homicide, but we're going to get into all of that too. All right, so here in the studio today is uh, 15th Ward Alderman Ray Lopez. Alderman Lopez. You are now officially in the lion's den. You announced last week you're running for mayor. 
What's the deal? Why are you running for mayor of the city of Chicago? So first off, I guess I should do the maze, maze, maze. <laughs> That's James's line. I'm, I'm going to steal his line because <laughs> it made me smile while I was waiting, listening. But good morning uh, to the audience of What's In It for the Black People, Chicago Radio. I'm running because Chicago doesn't have a mayor that is exuding any kind of leadership right now. And even in that example that you just described and in countless others that have replicated themselves time and time again over the last three years, we've had an absent mayor. We've had a mayor that is more concerned about trying to get a positive headline than actually doing something positive for the people of the city of Chicago, particularly for the black community, which has still not been raised uh, by her high boat. So I'm here. I am putting myself out there to run for mayor to provide a vision for what is possible based on what I've done in my community, which is representing both African Americans and Latinos, lifting c both communities up without having to separate them, without picking and choosing, but lifting both up and proving that it is possible to help communities when you have a heart for helping the people that you represent. So, Alderman, you represent... Um, it's funny. I remember I was the uh, committee. What well, I was working with the committee in the 18th ward, and I remember seeing this guy Ray Lopez that was first running, and I think you were running for alderman, and you won committeeman, and then eventually you came back to win alderman. Uh, you represent um, a mixed ward, a ward that has uh, both black and Latino in it. Um, talk to me about why you think black voters should consider you for a as a candidate for mayor? Well, I think after listening to the first part of this show, and I think in hearing a lot of the discussions, even hearing Dr. Willie Wilson's announcement, you know, black voters feel like they've made a mistake sometimes with certain community, with certain candidates when they come before them asking them for their support. You know, the buyer's remorse that people have from Lori, the buyer's remorse that people have from Fritz, the buyer's remorse from candidates who they feel are just taking advantage of the black community just to get them elected and then turning their back on them is something that is real. It's a real concern among black voters, and it's an earned concern, to be perfectly honest. But I'm not that candidate. I have a track record of, one, asking for the black community's vote, as I have in West Englewood, which is 90% African American, but also delivering back for the same community that it supported me. And that is something that I'm very proud of. That is something that is tangible, proven, and when you have a candidate who says, judge me by what I've done, not by what I say, mm -hmm. I can live up to that standard more than anybody else can. How? All I have to do is look in West Englewood specifically for my black residents and say, is that community better than where it was when I was elected alderman seven years ago? And it's a hands down yes. There is almost no one in that community who thinks that it is worse off because of where it was when I was elected. We have made investments in the community. We have made investments in the infrastructure. We have worked to ensure that residents are united in addressing some of the key issues facing the community, namely violence. And that's what you need to be able to point to if you're running for mayor, that you are able to provide the leadership to unite people, address their issues, and make progress and positive gains in those areas. Alderman, you talked about violence. Um, Talk to me about violence. I think that sometimes, uh, well, violence is, let me back up. What are your top three priorities? My top three priorities are very simple. Focusing on safety and taking ownership for the people's safety in the city of Chicago. Rebuilding our economy so that from downtown to 63rd and Ashland, we're able to have strong economic corridors throughout the entire city of Chicago. And ensuring that city services are delivered as we continue to Stand up and support all of our city workers, our police, our fire, and those of individuals who are picking up our garbage, filling our potholes, and fixing our streetlights. All right. So talk to me about, um, I want to. I know you mentioned public safety. Uh, crime is the, it's not even the 800-pound gorilla in the room at this point because everybody knows that the city is off the chain. It's, it's, a, it's a wave, a rampant wave that is sweeping across the country. How do you plan to deal with violence well, I, I don't think violence is the 800-pound gorilla that everyone knows about. It's the 800-pound gorilla that everyone wants to avoid talking about, to be perfectly honest. We're not having discussions about why our children are acting the way they're doing, why those street organizations are operating with impunity, why we have so many carjackings and smash and grabs going on throughout the city of Can Chicago. Can you pull that mic closer to you? We're not, <laughs> having, thank you? we're not having those conversations. We need to start from a place of truth to begin the conversation to ensure... 
thank you, to ensure that if we're going to tackle these issues, that we're starting from a place of truth and honesty. What I have done in my ward is a perfect example by when you look at the community of back of the yards, which was for years one of the most violent communities in the city of Chicago. For years it was in the top ten. Between the leadership of having a strong police commander who was able to inspire his officers to do professional constitutional policing, between the leadership of myself that brought the community together to not only make those 911 calls but also to stand in support when criminals were arrested, we were able to consistently and sustainably bring down our crime stats because we were working in tandem, police and community together, to go after those small but significant magnets of violence in our neighborhoods. That's what you need to do, and that's what can be replicated throughout every neighborhood in the city of Chicago. If we continue to just throw out platitudes and do grand pronouncements with no real meat behind them, we're going to continue to get the same results where you have 12-year-olds carjacking people, 13-year-olds shooting grandmas watering their lawn, and children dying on the street every weekend. Now, so I, so I, so there's an interesting juxtaposition that we find ourselves in because we all recognize that violence is the issue, but somehow it seems like when certain people, you, you're certain people, uh, talk about it, it is perceived very much like a dog whistle. Talk to me about that. Um, it, it, so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a precarious position to talk about crime, right? Because sometimes it may seem politically incorrect or it may seem that you're directing it towards certain people. Um, I have heard on numerous occasions, um, that there are people who feel like you provide dog whistles for people on the right um the i have a friend that calls them the hairy leg white males the like you talk to the sort of like you Car appeal Karen's to husband. the to, <laughs> you, you talk to the to the almost like the angry white man that is frustrated with the state of the city how do you respond to that well first off the hairy-legged, angry white man mm -hmm. is not the only person concerned about crime and safety in the city of Chicago. Everyone is concerned about feeling safe in the city of Chicago. And what I talk about, those aren't dog whistles. That's the truth. That is the unresolved truth that we have going on in the city of Chicago. When you look at where the crime is coming from, where you look at what's driving that crime, that goes back to what I said previously, which is that you have to start from a place of truth if you wish to correct and address the issues of violence in the city of Chicago. So where does it come from? Oftentimes, mm -hmm. you pick the story, but oftentimes it comes from poor, poorly, broke, poorly trained parents in broken households, okay. which we don't address because we don't want to talk about that in any community. It comes from poor political leadership wanting to hold people accountable and not wanting to upset voters which is also one of the reasons why most politicians don't address this because they don't want to upset a voter telling them that their son or daughter is a, a street organization member or selling drugs in the schools. And it also comes from a lack of will by the people who feel that they've stood up and no one stands up with them, so they've given up. We need to energize and reinvigorate all parts of that conversation in order to make progress in the city of Chicago. And by having truthful conversations, we can do that. In my ward, in my community, look, it is well documented that not everyone is happy with the truth when I make it known. I've had death threats by gangbangers twice in my community. My office has been bricked. My homes have been vandalized. People don't always want to hear the truth. But the truth is the only way that we address the issues in my neighborhoods. It's the only way that we've been able to make change in our neighborhoods by telling people fearlessly, this is the problem, these are the bad actors, and this is what we have to do to change it. That is how you, cha how you create sustained change and bring these numbers down, as opposed to constantly seeing the, the never-ending parade of headlines of violence and crime in the city of Chicago. How do you make that mesh 
with a black community that has seen the likes of Laquan McDonald, Rakia Boyd, um, and Jeanette Young. Um, when we want to be safe in our neighborhoods, but we don't necessarily know that the safety comes from the police or the or the criminals, and you look at it and it's kind of like you you don't I, I almost feel like black people don't want to call the police because we know what the outcome the victim can eventually become the victim again. Well, that's a couple. There's a couple things to that, Maze. First off, especially a, a younger generation doesn't want to call the police because nine times out of ten, their in, their first initial interactions with the police is negative. Gone are the days where you had officer friendly being the friendlier version of the police, giving children a positive image and role model to talk to and aspire to be. Those days don't exist anymore. So that I think is one of the most basic things that we need to get to. Just to get that conversation, that dialogue going again. But you're right. The black community does want to be safe. They just don't want heavy-handed policing. And with Laquan McDonald, we know Jason Van Dyke murdered that young man on the streets of Pulaski. We've seen with Rakia Boyd. And Anjanette Young was just in her own home, minding her own business, <clears throat> when a Do you feel empathy warned. in those cases? I do. Actually, I'm the one... One of the first ones that jumped to say that we had to put a uh, moratorium on no-knock warrants following the Anjanette Young case because I see the dangers that it presented to black people and everybody in particular, but that's immensely traumatizing to the black community, which seen you had Anjanette Young, Rakia Boyd, George Floyd, Laquan McDonald. You have a, an, an endless list, unfortunately, where policing has gone wrong. And more than that, where it seems as though there's a cover-up to avoid accountability. You have to, in order to restore the legitimacy of law enforcement, hold bad actors, even within the police department, accountable for what they do and what they do wrong. And there are thousands of officers who feel the exact same way, who don't want to be associated with people who don't know how to do their job correctly, professionally, or constitutionally. We have to support them and help them build back that bridge with the black community so that the black community knows that smart policing, targeted policing, is not heavy-handed policing, and that, that our residents, our seniors, our youth can feel comfortable calling the police when something happens, not having to worry that they are going to also become a victim as well. Bam, I'm going to stop on crime because i got a few things I want to hit on. Uh, but let's, before we go there, man, stop for a hot second. and Tell us, who is Ray Lopez not... The alderman. Who is Ray Lopez? Well, Jesus. I mean, I guess when you become an alderman. Are you a full-time alderman? I'm a full-time alderman. Or are you a, a part-timer? No. I have one job, and it's to be alderman of the 15th Ward. Tell me what – it's hard to say off, but tell me more about Ray Lopez personally. Who are you? What are you? What's going on? I see the dogs. I see you got a husband. Tell us Tell us what the deal is. You know, Ray Lopez, when he takes off the alderman's hat, is just – an average guy from the southwest side. Uh, my husband and I live in Brighton Park, uh, 47th and Western. Uh, we have seven dogs. Most of them are rescues. Seven dogs. Seven. You got a pack. Go ahead. My own bobsled team. Um, but, you know, I love animals, uh, love reading, love, love the quiet life. Believe it or not, I'm actually really a, a, a quiet person when I'm off the clock. I, 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 I prefer just to sit on the couch and watch TV with my dogs and Hugo on the couch with me. Um, I don't always have to be the forward face of everything in the city. Um, but I also like, you know, going out in the mornings for walks, taking my dogs with me, trying to do some exercise. Sometimes people see me out in the suburbs on the uh, steps over there. Okay. In, in the suburbs? In Palis. Oh, you walk up the, uh, okay. So swallow maybe cliff. you should come with me one day. Are <laughs> you trying show. to make fun of me, man? <laughs> hey, man, I'm not doing Swallow Cliff. Nope, sir, not me. Uh, so, Alderman, sometimes people say the company, you, you judge people by the company they keep. Alderman, every time I see you, man, you're on Fox News. Like, That's because you don't invite me on the show enough. I, <laughs> but, man, I saw, did I see you on Tucker Carlson? So, let me back up. Let me stop. Because one of the biggest critiques I have of Mayor Lori Lightfoot is her 
desire to deal with the national mm-hmm. um, and not the local um, press and the local media. I noticed that Fox has made you, has kind of latched on to you. You appear a lot on Fox. Uh, talk to me about Tucker Carlson. Uh, Tucker's got some issues, right? Um, I'm I'm reserved the name column, but I do think that a lot of people feel very strongly about Tucker Carlson. He's even a Russian sympathizer, or some to some effect. Talk to me. Is that a friend of yours? How does it work? What's going on with the Fox News thing? You know, when it comes to reporters, it's a very dangerous and slippery slope to start picking and choosing which reporters you want to speak to and why. I've never, never turned down an interview request from any reporter, regardless of their affiliations. Okay. Whether they are left, right, center, local or national. They call, I ask, because I do believe politicians need to be accessible and accountable to a free press so that citizenry can get the answers they want. Um, If CNN had called me, I would have been on CNN. If MSNBC had called me, I would have been on MSNBC. They don't want me. That's their prerogative. You called, I answered. Other radio stations, news, local, everyone everyone who asked, I answered. Okay. I, I can't. I, I know that feeling, right? I, people tell me, well, why do you go here or how come? It, I talk to the people that will talk to me. And, and my story doesn't change where exactly. I go. As long I don't care what the outlet is, you're not going to flip me based on the outlet. So, okay, I appreciate that. All right, Alderman, let, let me do this because uh, we're about to ta- – I got to take a break. I've been drinking my coffee. I'm going to leave you here for a hot second. Reese, play them. See if we got any good Ray Lopez quotes in there. I'm going to take a real quick break. We're going to come back, and then we're going to get into – you can wake them lines up because we're about to get into some black people stuff because uh, I got some real questions uh, about – Kind of, you know, some of the policies. You know, we got a black people first thing. We we, we got a black people that. first party. Uh, we're organizing. You know, we got uh, over 13,000 signatures for the president. Speaking of that, hey amen. So to all of my political people who have been to the classes on Saturday, um, I'd like to point out that Alderman Ray, Ray Lopez turned in 400 signatures for Kerry. Now, I'm saying that. Only to say that a lot of people talked a lot of smack but did not politics. Remember how I told you how this works, right? And I'm not suggesting that that's the trick, but I want you to understand that a lot of people promised what they would do to help, and y'all know how hard we were going. Uh, and Alderman Lopez, you delivered. Um, you come. I want to. I want to get a little bit to your political roots, though, because okay. I do wonder. Like, man, they tell me you was a sky cap. I really want to get a sky cap at Southwest, right? Now you know Southwest is a lot of people's favorite airline around here. So I really want to know Mine a little too. bit about that. Uh, and then how we get the? How do you get the? You know, we're gonna talk about a couple other things, but then also get ready because I want to talk about immigration. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the perceptions of low homicide. Um, Gangs, crime, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, And then we want to talk about this map, right? Because it's a lot going on. It's a war going on outside no man is safe from. So we got to figure out where you stand on that, who you're supporting, where this all thing, this thing goes. Look, y'all, it's the Maze Jackson Show. We'll be right back after these messages. The Maze Jackson Show. We'll be back after this break. Broken screen? Crash system? Are you in need of spyware or virus removal from your computer? Well, contact RPC Computer Repair in South Shore and let us help you with all your computer repair services and print needs. Need office or print production services, copies, scans, fax, or even notary service? Then stop by and support RPC Computer Repair and Print Shop located 1741 East 71st Street in the 71st Street Corridor, newly revitalized South Shore areas, and let RPC be your one-stop shop, where we believe RPC is your PC. RPC Computer Repair is also a UPS access point where you can drop off and pick up your important packages. So let RPC be of service to you. Call RPC Computer Monday through Saturday. Saturday, 8 a.m. through 6 p.m. at 773-966-4457. That's 773-966-4457. 
visit RPC at rpccomputeringinc.com for more information. And now, traffic and weather. Good morning. What's in it for the Black People Media family? The time is now 7.36 a.m. I'm Reese the Ruler with your Chicagoland area traffic and weather report as we head over to the Kennedy. Over to the Loop will be 37 minutes, 39 minutes outbound to O'Hare on the Eaton's Deerfield till it's changed 41 minutes, 40 minutes back to Deerfield. On the Eisenhower Thorndale to the Loop, 40 minutes, 44 minutes back out to Thorndale. On the Stevenson from I-355 to the Dan Ryan will be 54 minutes. Outbound will be 37. The Bishop Ford, I-80 to the Dan Ryan, 34 minutes, 26 minutes to I-80. On the Dan Ryan is still 19 minutes to the Loop, 13 minutes to 95th. On DuSable Lakeshore Drive South, 55th to Jackson will be 8 minutes. Jackson to 55th will be 9. On the north side of things, Randolph to Bremar will be 8. Bremar to Randolph will be 9 minutes. And weather. It is currently 50 degrees and sunny. Today will be a high of 68 with a low of 45. I'm Reese the Ruler. Back to the Maze Jackson Show. <laughs> Did you have to go to jail? Put your house on love for sale. Did you get a good lawyer? I hope you didn't catch a tan. I hope you find the right man who fits it for you. And are you shopping anywhere? Change the color of your hair. Are you busy? And did you have to pay this fine That you've been dodging all the time Are you still dizzy? Listening to the Maze Jackson show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my man uh, Ray Lopez in the studio. DJ Reese the Rule on the ones and twos. Uh, Alderman Lopez. Let me get to the. Let me get to the. Wake my lions up, Reese. Get them up. Wake them up. Wake them up. You have to be ready with the lions in the den, bro. We 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 in the den. We we on the clock. So let's get it. Um, Alderman. In case I don't know if you know that black people have been are in Chicago are feeling a little. Cheated by the Democratic Party. Uh, when you look around our neighborhoods, you look around our communities, it seems like for all of the votes that we have given the Democrats, it does not seem like it has paid off for us for years. Um, right now, there is a war going on to dilute black voting power in the city of Chicago. So I'm going to start with my first question of the Black People First Party, which is, do you support the right of undocumented immigrants to vote? No. Didn't even hesitate. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't support the right... Wait, you... Wait. Didn't you name Ray Lopez? Sure is. Ray Lopez, how is it that you don't... Wait, so let me just get the question out one Did more I, time. Do you support the right of the undocumented answer, no. immigrants to vote in un, in municipal elections? No, I don't. Voting is the right 
and the reward for citizenship. And citizens vote. And if people want to have the ability to vote, they should become American citizens. Period. What about the dreamers? That is why the failure of Congress to rectify that situation creates questions like this right now. Dreamers should be able to get a path to citizenship. That is something that many congressmen, particularly many congressmen from Chicago, have talked about at nauseum for decades and did nothing about failing that community too. But voting is a constitutional right given to citizens of this great country. And that's how it should remain. Okay. Um, what is in it for the black people with Ray Lopez as a candidate? As a candidate. As a candidate. No, back up. As, as mayor, mayor. And as a candidate and as mayor, uh, it's my full intention to act on a number of the policies that I have proposed as alderman. Uh, most notably, you'll remember, and your, your listeners will remember, that I was the alderman who said that we had to expand contracting opportunities to, be, to run uh, similar to the demographics of the city of Chicago, to have parity with our demographics. So we know that African Americans are about a third of the city. Latinos are about a third of the city. Uh, Caucasian and, and non-African American, non-Latinos are about the other third. But yet we are stuck at 26 and 6 in the city of Chicago when it comes to WMBE contracting goals. That's completely unacceptable unacceptable i think also one of the things that i would push is the same thing that i've introduced as well which is a classification specifically for ados the american descendants of slaves wait not wait, wait, Americans. wait 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 go back say that again you heard me no i've already I introduced and i want to act on the ability to have a specific classification for contracting in the wmbe program women and minority-owned businesses to be specific for American descendants of slaves. Because I think oftentimes WMBE for black people, black businesses, gets diluted with everybody else that gets thrown in the pie. Particularly as we've seen under this administration trying to include white LGBT business owners as part of the WMBE program. Hold on, dog. You you a white LGBT dude. What do you, you just you said I was Latino like ten minutes ago. Do you, so. you, man, which one are you first, Latino or well, you get I'm Chicago one. You, you get it LGBT. That. Well, you could be Latino. What? So wait, I stumped you twice today. <laughs> so back up. You don't support. Wait, 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 wait. So you're suggesting that you believe that there should be a set aside in the contracting for ADOS, Correct. and you do not support. A set aside for the LGBT community. Correct. What is this bizarre world? Okay. Well, first off, how are you going to prove it? How are you going to prove someone's LGBT? What test? What what qualifications would there ever be for someone to say you could walk in, Maze, and say I'm how? LGBT? I need I need to count twice for a contract. There's no proof for it, and it can be so easily manipulated. And there's no proof that anybody in that category has been disenfranchised from access to opportunities in the city of Chicago. The way black people, the way descendants of slaves have been in the city of Chicago. Okay. How do I know? <laughs> well, damn. So. You asked, I answered. I, on the record. So. Let me ask, do you feel like you're pandering because you're on what's in the front of black people media? Is this something you would say anywhere else? Actually, it's something that I've already done and introduced eight months ago, almost a year ago. How did it go? Still sitting and waiting for a shot in committee. Who blocked it? Honestly, there were a number of members of the Black Caucus who were not supportive and concerned that my efforts to both create a new category as well as to require parity for contracting would jeopardize the entire program. And the decision and support was maintaining the status quo. There's a mat there is a battle going on. Wait. There's did you did, did I have to read correctly you got kicked out of the Latino caucus? No, I quit the Latino caucus. There's a difference between being jumped and pushing. And I jumped. 
Why did you quit the Latino caucus? Difference of opinion at the time with members and their political aspirations going into the 2019 elections. Got it. You back? Nope. So where are you on the remap situation? Because it seems like, Alderman, just, just for tickles and giggles, that to finally when the black people get in charge of the map, because Dick Mill ran it forever, and then when Michelle Harris gets the spot, and then Pat O'Connor, and he got to negotiate it. Now it seems like nobody cares about seniority. No one cares about any of the other things that we, all the rules that we had to follow getting up to it. Whose map do? Whose map proposal do you support right now? Well, Maze, I'll tell you that I do believe that the rules have changed under uh, in this cycle um, because nobody does care about seniority. I've seen it firsthand where people junior to me are being treated with more regard than me, and I'm their senior alderman. But I support the coalition map. I support the map that keeps neighborhoods together. I support the map that keeps West Englewood together and doesn't dilute the power of the black vote in that community. I've made my thoughts on this well known. I would love to have sat down with the entire rules committee to hammer this out, but that just wasn't possible. My neighbors didn't want to talk. The Black Caucus didn't want to talk. Negotiation is not some people walking in and saying, well, we're taking this and this and this and then walking out the room. That's not how you negotiate. That's not how you talk, especially if you say your colleagues and neighbors. I was in that room five times trying to draw a map, trying to work with people. Then nobody was on the other end of that table. A decision has to be made. Now, can the members of the city council come together before May 18th and work this out so that we can come to some sort of uh, compromise? They could if they have the will to do so. And right now I think that many people are more interested in posturing than they are in actually doing what's right for the city of Chicago. And to be fair, the longer they drag this out, the harder it's going to be for any of my colleagues seeking reelection to know who they represent. Because by the time that referendum vote is over in June, they will have barely five weeks to meet their new residents and go ask for their, their support, signing their petitions to run for alderman again. So alderman, is it safe to say that one of the reasons that I've heard you're running for alderman is because you don't believe you can win in your new ward, in the ward that would be drawn for you? Is that is there any truth to that? Absolutely not. Okay. I think I would have been alderman for another decade if I had chose to stay there. I'm running for mayor because, in my opinion, no one shares the same vision, passion, and awareness for what's coming down the pike as I do. I could easily have been alderman for a decade, pointing my finger at the mayor's office, whomever that may have been, sitting in that chair, blaming them while cashing my check for the next decade. I could have done that, but that would be a disservice to my city, and I would not have been able to live with myself. So I'm throwing my, ha my name in the ring because I believe in my city. I believe in my abilities to save this city, and I'm putting it quite literally all on the line to do this. That's a lot. This isn't a safe run. So now, let me ask you this question. What do you see as your path to victory? Um, let me see. Let me say, first of all, and I'm, I obviously don't want to probably speculate. So right now we got, let's say, the mayor. Let's say you. We got Willie Wilson. We're, we're hearing Quigley is probably going to throw his hat in the ring somewhere in that space. And then there's another tier of car car uh, candidates like Cam Buckner, et cetera. Um, let me, first of all, how many people do you think are going to jump in this race? I think the level of dissatisfaction with the current administration and the individuals who know that we have a weakened incumbent mayor right now, you could see anywhere between 10 and 12 candidates in this race. Does the mayor make the runoff, you think? That's questionable at this point. Who's your base of support? It seems like... Um, it seems like you would, well, no, you tell me who's your base of support, do you think? Where do you start? I think most people make a lot of generalities when they think who I speak to and who supports me. Um, but it has been my experience over the last several months and indeed over the last several days that my message of restoring safety in the city of Chicago, of taking ownership for people's safety and every resident's safety in every community resonates all across the city of Chicago whether they are black, 
brown, white, or some shade in between. It resonates with everybody, not just the Southwest side, not just cops and firemen. It resonates with everybody who wants to be able to come outside of their homes without going home with a bullet in it. Okay, yeah. So I just want to point out, because everybody's looking at you read the paper, there's literally 12 words on the paper. There's like right. l- there's literally 12 words on the paper. I really want you just to hold it up. Just show the people. It's like literally 12, pa- 12 words on the paper. Um, so I don't know that he's necessarily reading. I think he's probably trying to get his keywords locked in. All right, um, Alderman, man, you, you've come in here and thrown me off a little bit. Do you want to take any calls? You're nervous I, to take any calls? I've never shied away from calls on this show, and I'm not about to start now. Well, on that note, we're going to open up the phone lines. Give us a call, 872-259-7474. We got Alderman Ray Lopez in the building. Look. Damn. Look. Damn. Blank I mean, you page. Get that on the way out. I'll pick it but, up. <laughs> look, look. I'm like, look, he tried to do the Jamal Cole on me, right? At least he didn't bring yellow tape. All right, we're going to open up the phone lines. Give us a call, 872-259-7474. Let's talk to uh, Alderman Ray. We're going to be talking to Alderman Ray Lopez. Call him. What you got? How you doing, man? This is Tyrone Muhammad. Tyrone. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, Alderman Lopez. Good morning, Tyrone. How are you? It's interesting, it's interesting to hear you talk about a lot of the issues that affect our community, black people. And um, I'm very I'm very surprised um, to hear you, and it's my first time really getting the opportunity to listen to uh, you, your philosophy, your concepts, your ideologies around uh, proper governance, right? My, I have a couple of questions. Okay. And you just mentioned public safety. And, and I want to know your take and your views on the formerly incarcerated prison reform since I spent over two decades with black and brown bodies in prison. And from the space of violence prevention, reentry, mental health and social services, even substance abuse counseling, excelling are on the front line of reducing a lot of or preventing a lot of the violence that we see in these communities. Mm -hmm. Yet we don't receive the same respect, nor do we receive the same benefit, nor do we receive the same resources as policing, meaning that how do you fund response with $2 billion and continue? We continue to ask for money for policing that has improved or served our community effectively, then you we can't justify equal resources for prevention. It's unacceptable to me that we have an eight hundred million dollar county jail budget. Ta. A, a, a one point six billion dollar I get it, a one point six billion dollar uh, uh IDOC budget and, and for our community we don't have the same resources to prevent violence. That's one question. One more man and the what question. do you see and how do you, you got hold on. What the next question mm-hmm. how do you see um your administration dealing with uh the the, the high unemployment rate in African American I say black community. Um and I I, I listen. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Ty. Go ahead. So Tyrone, first off, thank you for the questions. First, when it comes to the violence prevention programs and funding You know, historically, it has been politically sexier to invest in police than it has been to invest in violence prevention. We know this. And even some of the increased funding that uh, this administration has done towards anti-violence programs still pales in comparison to what we do in terms of reaction as opposed to being proactive in stopping the violence in our streets. I'm a firm believer in many of the anti-violence programs that are out there. And I believe that we should be able to fund and expand opportunities, particularly for those who are ex-offenders, who are returning citizens, who want to make a new path for themselves and keep people out from following in their footsteps into prison. But you have to be able to, one, fund it, and two, you have to also provide metrics for success because there are a lot of organizations out there that take money for anti-violence that do nothing with it. And those are the ones that we call the grief peddlers and poverty pimps. I think I've said that before on this show. We have to weed those folks out 
and focus on the programs that actually can work, programs like what you're talking about. Now, when you talk about the high unemployment and opportunities for black men in particular, actually, honestly, Dr. Willie Wilson and I, several months ago, almost two years ago, come to think of it, proposed using our water department contracts, $1.2 billion in work contracts throughout the city of Chicago as a works jobs program specifically targeting our city and black men in particular, dividing it up into districts and ensuring that we could hire from within those communities. The city of Chicago spends millions and billions of dollars on all kinds of works projects throughout the city, whether it's repaving, whether it's lighting, you name it. There's no reason why we can't require either by zip code or by region employment of our own city employees so that you don't constantly have the folks from the suburbs or Indiana coming to do work and getting paid by the taxpayers of the city of Chicago. All right. Hey, man, that's Alderman Ray, Ray Lopez. We got another call on the line. Call you on the Mays Jackson Show. Yes, this is Ray. How you guys doing? What's up, Ray? Great name. Hey, listen, I got to thank, thank you. Hey, Ray. Alderman. Yeah, I got a question. Ray, I mean, Alderman it's Lopez, I spoke with you. We did a Zoom meeting back in July, and it was about a crime prevention program that I had designed called the formula, but we talked about frontline cover two. It's a um a three tactical level policing strategy. I wanted to know you probably don't remember that, but I wanted to know what was your thoughts on that because I never got a chance to uh, get a response after the um, Zoom meet. And then the other question is with the uh, no representation population, um, we didn't count the um, ex-offenders um, in the census. So what we wanted to do was get a recount with the census bill. Would you had, um, would you had um, granted permission for a complaint to be made with the census bill to get a recount for those um, convicts, I mean ex-convicts could have been counted could have been counted on our census bureau and then that way we wouldn't have problem with the mapping that's going on that way we could have got resources um in, in inside our inside of chicago would you have would you have been one of the people who signed that complaint to have that uh, count questionnaire redone so ray uh first off thank you for the two questions one i do remember that meeting and i am always wel welcoming of new ideas and we can continue and push forward um, the hard part is getting the current administration and the current leadership of CPD to be willing to accept new ideas of pol policing and prevention. But we can follow up and we can still continue to push forward. More importantly, as mayor, you already have that introduction we could, so we could bring that conversation back. Second, with regards to the ex-offender undercount on the census, this census was probably the most jacked-up census in recent memory, in large part because of the political games that Donald Trump was playing throughout the entirety of the process. I would be willing to support the complaint. Uh, to have the undercount issues addressed. But I also know, and I will say this out loud, I also know other communities feel that they were undercounted as well. So that doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a surplus of new black residents only included if the undercount were to be reevaluated. All right, uh, I'm going to take time for one one more call. Look, y'all, uh, we got to say thank you to everybody from WBGX. Man, y'all... Y'all got to give everybody an opportunity. I know y'all want to get all y'all's in and everybody feels super, 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 but, like, that was two calls. We could have got, like, ten. Caller, you on the Maze Jackson Show. This is the last question. What you got? Hi. Good morning, Maze, uh, and good morning, Alderman Cecilia Butler, Washington Park. Hey, Quick Simmons question. Butler. What? Thank you. What is, the, what is your position, Alderman, when it comes to uh, the free cameras? that the uh, mayor says that she wants to provide to uh, all households uh, dealing with uh, catching crime because we do know the only crime that's been caught has been on the camera. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Cecilia. I love the idea uh, of cameras and rebates for Chicagoans that the mayor proposed. I loved it so much I proposed it six years ago, and I proposed it again three years ago. And I'm glad that she's filing it finally acting on what I proposed and suggested to her at the beginning of her term. We have to make our neighborhoods safe, and criminals will go to the areas where they know that there are fewer cameras. And if we have communities and block clubs that have posted signs saying that, that this is a, a, a recorded zone, 
criminals are going to go elsewhere. So we could have executed this years ago. Um, my hope is that we could get this off the ground fairly quickly uh, and that we don't turn this into a backdoor uh, patronage scheme for someone's friends who's going to monitor and control this contract. Hey, y'all, uh, this is the uh, Maze Jackson Show. Alderman, I'm going to give you an opportunity to close. I know you have um, been here for an hour, so I appreciate that. Tell us, uh, give us a wrap. You know, thank you, Maze. And I want to, again, thank Reese for all the lion, the lion's den. Um, and thank your callers for listening and watching. Um, I'm running because I love our city. You love your city. We have problems, but we can work through them together. I have a track record of working with not just my community, your community, and many communities. That's proven. That's leadership. That's what I bring to the table. I'm never going to stop being Chicago's biggest advocate, and I'm never going to make apologies for my passion for every neighborhood in the city of Chicago. We can do this, and I'm asking for your help in the months and years to come. All right. And you can visit me at RaymondLopezChicago.com. All right, y'all. Hey. Remember the people who stopped in. Uh, he answered the question straight and direct. Um, and so, Alderman, I'm, I'm going to wish you luck. You know, we Willie Wilson, man, he's like affection. We got a lot of affection for him. Um, he's a good man. I so, mean, I have no arguments with Willie. He's so a good man. let's let's try it. Like, you know, and I, it is my sincere hope that as you two uh, bump into each other on the campaign trail, that you remember that the focus is not each other, yep. but uh, the, the, the one. And let me ask the question before we go. Let me just ask this question before go we go. If you had to bet, you or the mayor got the bigger willy? I don't go to the wiener circle. <laughs> and we ain't going to have that discussion. <laughs> ah, I, hey, Willie Wilson said his by, was bigger. And by the way, we go to two different bars anyway. So I don't know how they measure in her bars. but you know, oh! <laughs> And on that note, y'all, we're going to call it a wrap. It is the Maze Jackson Show. Alderman Ray Lopez sat in with us uh, in the lion's den. Uh, we'll look forward to talking to you a little bit later on the campaign trail. Always. This is the Maze Jackson Show. The Maze Jackson Show. We'll be back after this break. Maze Jackson. Uh-oh, what's in it for the black people? I want to know, is there an offensive black people list? Who manages it and do black people have to honor it? Maze, maze, take your Uncle Tom. That's why you're an offensive. And the reason why you're Uncle Tom is the real story of Uncle Tom. How he worked for his freedom and then the slave master reneged on him and wouldn't let him get his freedom. So you know what he did? He left. You left him with the church's money. You were smart enough to work your way off so you offended the white folks and then you offended the black folks because your ass left and because they wouldn't. And who manages the left is both black folks and white folks. And if you see in that situation, the black folks is just as bad as the white slave owner that Uncle Tom left. So what happens if you say that and someone gets offended? You ran off the plantation, brother. That's why you're offended. That's all I got, bro. Keep being offensive. Thank you. Please, Jackson. Today, the Biden administration is releasing what it calls a new strategy to fight domestic terrorism. Following a 100-day review, federal officials are now laying out a new plan hoping to deter, detect, and prosecute domestic terror. They went to the Capitol waving their flags and looking for smoke. He was out there looking for justice. They was over there looking for votes. Ashley Babbitt was with him and told all the people that nothing could stop us. She climbed through the Capitol window, breached the security, and called a shot, bro. The media say she a veteran. They paint the picture to make her look greater. But she disrespected the same country that she served that makes her a traitor. They was fighting police, resisting arrest. On God, I couldn't believe it. I guess blue lives only tend to really matter when it's convenient. Hey, these are the times we witness in history. All because they didn't get a victory. United States is so contradictory. We get equal rights, that's a mystery. Politicians, they more like magicians. You know they got tricks up their sleeve. We point out the flaws that's up in this country. You know they gonna tell us to leave. Uh, somebody try to help me understand it. Always seems like a double standard. They be out here leaving us empty handed to show rights we are not granted uh, the media is the culprit when it comes to the comparison because when it comes to race they always changing up the narratives terrorism they say you a patriot call you a hero i call it terrorism and that's on the real you know what we know i say it's terrorism they say you a patriot call you a hero i call it terrorism and that's on the real you know what we know i say it's terrorism
terrorism. They say you a patriot, call you a hero. I call it terrorism. And that's on the real. You know what we know. I say it's terrorism. They say you a patriot, call you a hero. I call it terrorism. We still out here trying to get our reparations. But the government pump faking out here hesitating. I'm out here trying to keep my peace so I keep meditating. The media make us look bad. They taint our reputation. Look, it's so sad. It's so sad. That COVID causing toe tags. You claim you so patriotic, but you ain't wearing no mask. You out here wildin' with your MAGA flags and showing your ass. You want to be part of some type of revolution so bad. Look, you talk revolution and constitutional rights, homie. I guess we forgot about back in the days when all of the business was whites only. Yeah, yeah. George Floyd got justice. Juneteenth got much respect. They made it a national holiday. Man, it's all good, but cut the check. They giving out all of these vaccines. Putting it in you like caffeine. Was it all in the part of the plan? I bet money like DraftKings. It's land of the free, home of the brave. 1776, we wasn't free to 1865. So we wasn't part of that shit. And that there is terrorism. 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 Back to the Maze Jackson Show. You are listening to the most dangerous show in the morning. This is What's In It for the Black People Radio. Maze Jackson. Maze Jackson. The most vociferous advocate for black people in the world. For Ruthie Moore, for Ty Stroger, I am the host of the Maze Jackson Show, asking every single day, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them Maze said, Mayor Lightfoot, man, we ain't accepting that. We ain't accepting that. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Let's get down to business and go ahead and address the facts. Man, life foot seems more lesbian than black. Rahm Emanuel was another case. He was just a tire. Act. 50 closed schools left much to be desired. Police had Anjanette naked on that body cam. They suppressed the footage so it couldn't touch a lot of hands. Reminds me of that 16 shots in that cover up. Both of them similar, so I went and dug it up. George Floyd killed, a lot of riots happened in the town. Southside burned and they wouldn't let them bridges down. Grandmother sick, need a prescription and plus a couple groceries. You won't have to travel just to get it now. COVID-19 out here shutting all the business down. Not enough SBA loans to even give around. So many failed businesses that you can put them in the path. If you don't survive the pandemic, it's gonna sit you down. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks Shout out to Willie Wilson, hope one day you get to send it We need some different players in the game to handle business Too so many shady characters like Madigan and Blago But when you really break it down, it's typical Chicago City full of gangsters, it's what the land was built on Same streets with hood legends, DNA gets spilled on Carjackers out here lurking, trying to get they steel on Looking for a block to put them Hellcat wheels on Let us give bogus appraisals a red line Car crackers out here getting minimal fair time and I'm the seal carry, I stay with the pipe. Right. The Illinois gun laws giving minimal rights. Uh-huh. Stay up on the swivel, make sure I'm moving tight. You know Check all of my mirrors when I pull up to the light. I picked my homie up from out of town, man, he caught a flight. Right. He was hella nervous, told him, sure, this is a way of life. Uh-huh. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that milked is so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes. Government infested black neighborhoods. Neighborhoods with crack smoke. System that built us so bad, we got lactose. Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks. Wake up, Chicago! Ah, uh, wake up, world! This is the Maze Jackson Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Hey, let me tell y'all. Well, I'm going to tell y'all in a little bit. But I told you they was going to start. No sooner do black people start to speak up and stand up for themselves, do the white folks say, we're going to break them down. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But I got to um take a moment and introduce... 
our guest. Um, she is here with us today um, because she is the reason we went to Springfield. So yesterday I came back and I told y'all about the, the trip to Springfield and how, you know, the things that it meant to me. But it kind of got lost in my story. But I want y'all to understand the reason that we went to Springfield. And the reason that we went to Springfield is that no matter how hypercritical or how much challenges that we have um, sometimes, our family is still our family. There's certain things that we just can't have happen. And I recognize that right now sometimes, you know, we are a little bit frustrated with our elected officials. But when we heard the story of six foot five white Steve Reich, the alcoholic, and his assault or attempted assault, the fact that he walked up on Representative Lakeisha Collins, got in her face, had to be restrained, told her to keep his her name out his effing mouth. And I just couldn't help but think, like, where they do that at? And I was thinking how bold it is. And so we all mounted up. The reason we went to Springfield was because we went to be in solidarity with one of our sisters, period. And black folks got together, mobilized, bought a bus, did what it was necessary to demonstrate to the powers that be that we just ain't having it. And I got to tell you, one of the proudest moments in our in my personal political history was to be our efforts to be acknowledged from the floor. Um, here today to talk to us, though, is the reason that we went to Springfield. Uh, in case y'all did not remember or don't remember, she came to talk to us about what happened. And she hit me up yesterday and said, yeah, I just got to take y'all. I got I, I want the opportunity to tell the audience thank you. So uh, family, with us today is State Representative Lakeisha Collins. Hey, Reese, give her a round of applause because that sister stood up. Uh, and I know what it had to I, I Sometimes I know it's like when people are at you and you got to have your cousins. But y'all, welcome our cousin. Uh, State Representative Lakeisha Collins to the Maze Jackson Show. Welcome, Representative. How you feeling this morning? I feel good. How are you, Maze? I'm great, like I'm Tony the people. Tiger. But I'm just telling you, these white folks has got it in for me now. They a little wow. upset. They a little bothered that that we that we 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 now we flexed on them, but that we just said we wasn't having it. But talk to me, sis. What's going on? How's everything? We didn't get you in trouble in Springfield, did we? What's trouble? <laughs> <laughs> I'm elected by the people, the people I serve. So I'm not worried about anything outside of that. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to um, Black People First, New Era Chicago, what's in it for the Black people. You just giving me an opportunity to share my story in here firsthand. Um, I felt really empowered when you all showed up in Springfield. All Black, I mean, unapologetically Black, just strong and I, I felt really really good and so um man just thank you so, thank you for that rep collins i think we've all been somewhere in the universe where either we've been bullied or attempted to be bullied and we seem to want and and, and have been in a position where maybe you look around and it ain't Nobody got your back. Or they got your back. And I'm not suggesting nobody didn't have your back. But I am suggesting sometimes you want people to know that I'm not by myself. Like you right. just can't get away with it. And I got to tell you, uh, when them white folks looked up and was like, and you know, I just felt it was good for him to be feeling like, now you know what it's like for somebody to be sitting behind you. Now you know, you see when we got him on the elevator. We got him on. I, I just felt like I'm. It was a weird scenario, and I'm going to just tell you, Representative, because it seemed like we were kind of like the Black Caucus didn't know how to, to receive us. Some people was like, is it a problem? Like, we don't want y'all to start up or stir no mess up because we got to get to the end of session. And I don't think we came to mean no harm, but I do feel like sometimes we are super critical. But when the call goes out, we all family. 
Right, we all family, and we not gonna let nobody stand. So I hope, I hope it it, I, it was a weird scenario. Some people came, and it was even crazier to see the white people coming to take pictures and come to be taken. And it was great to see you and Representative Harper and Cam Buckner. But how do we get to a point where we see each other as allies and assets and not fear each other, like? How do we how do we repair that relationship between uh, the black community who does, I think, has a legitimate right to feel like we've been left out and left behind? We still didn't get an answer for cannabis as we came out of here. We did make more billionaires uh, for gaming with no black answer. We are seeing hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, going to uh, white health care companies uh, that are taking advantage of our plight. But even at that. Ain't nobody walking up on you. But how do we how do we close that gap so that we're not seen as the enemy, but really an asset towards black political empowerment and economic empowerment? I think in this space, you know, I'm still fairly new as far as being an elected official, but I'm not new to organizing or having these tough conversations. I think in a black community and what I've heard when I got there is that you do have some black elected officials who feel like they're not supported, right? And if they take that step and they're radical and they, you know, um, say everything off their chest, that they're going to be retaliated against or they're not going to be perceived well to, you know, certain folks. For me, I'm black. I'm going to always be black. I live this skin every day. And so what I think needs to happen is that we need to bring all the black electors to the table. You need to go ahead and do the, the agenda, talk to them, restore that relationship. I think just people in particular, individuals, they're, they take things personal, right? I mean, I hear things about folks all the time. I don't care. I care about how you treat me and how we interact with each other. Um, my intentions is always going to be about Black people and improving our community and making sure that we can really see and feel the change that we've been fighting for forever. And so when I said that speech on the floor, I wasn't a, I wasn't scared. I wasn't shy. I didn't have to think twice about it. I wanted to make sure that black folks who took time out of their busy days to show up in their capital. And I say your capital because it is your tax dollars. Right. Um, that they were welcomed. And so, you know, me and you don't know each other like that, Maze, but I told you before, I've watched you since I was a CNA, when you were on the radio, listening to you. Um, and just to now see like what you have done with creating this space for Black people to be proud to be Black, um, it's amazing, man. And I definitely want to be a part of it. I, I definitely think that you all showing up, it gave Black Caucus members, Black people in that building from the workers on up, it gave them a sense of empowerment. And that's what we need. We have a fight ahead of us that it ain't going to get solved overnight. But I think this is just the beginning. And there's so much more that we can do. And so I'm okay with being held accountable. I'm okay with having those conversations. Um, we need that, especially in Springfield. And so anybody who knows that environment, you know that, you know, we need to be, you know, on our toes. So... I think we just need to have a conversation, repair these relationships, you know? Well, I'm here to tell you, um, we cannot we cannot let our ecosystem um, continue to falter. Uh, the world has changed. I'm looking at what's happening with uh, Representative uh, Harper and just thinking to myself, look, y'all, we got to be, ain't no Calvary coming to save us. And so as you as you continue to make your moves and I know you're going into the election cycle, we definitely want uh we, we definitely are looking to start a chapter of black people first on the west side. I'm I'm on the west side, so I, I'm gonna take that charge. But I also think that we need people like yourself who represent wholly black districts for the most part, um, to come join us, right? To 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 know that you got somebody that's got a back and know that you got your own crew that you can go to to help you get signatures and can challenge and can do all of those things and start building up your muscles so that you don't have to ever be in fear. Um, I thought it was poetic that uh, old Steve-O uh, had a little run-in. Um, he walked this. up to me again. I told you, right? Wait, no, he what? Yes. Right what? Before, um, right before... <laughs> 
Oh, see, he's there, whatever, whatever happened. Hold on, whatever happened. So, uh, Rep Nichols was sitting next to me, and he walks up to me and he says, Um, and I'm sitting down, mind you, and he's like, There's some people down there with signs up with your name and my name on it. And I'm like, Uh huh. And he was like, Are you gonna go tell them to take it down? I said, You want me to tell black people that they don't have a first amendment right, that they can't, you know, congregate in their capital. And he was like, I thought this was over with. I said, I mean, not really. People are still a little bit upset about what happened. And so he was like, so you're not gonna tell them to stop? I said, no, but I am gonna introduce them in the gallery. And so he was like, okay. And he walked away angry, but I mean, he was a little overserved when we saw him. Do y'all let them people go on the floor drunk? Did, you know, you know that the uh the uh the the minority leader called us over too. Like, uh, can we can we please we have five sisters. I don't think drunk. anybody has ever seen anything like that before. You should right? well he had him in the circle. We had him in the circle in his office. He was like uh you know, like the circle, like it could have turned into the circle, but y'all know y'all got them laws in Springfield, but it was in the circle. Yeah, I don't, I, can I tell you, I, in all the years that I was in Springfield, I never had the opportunity um, to see black people in a position of power. And I'm going to tell you from my meeting with the speaker, who I never thought that I would cross the threshold of that door much less see a black man and then to look up when I came into the gallery and saw all those black folks sitting behind the Republicans and the Republicans scurrying around like uh uh is they are they uh uh I must tell you that it was one of my proudest moments in Springfield um and it just showed me that there is an opportunity for us to build together. So you let them black caucus members know, right? Because I've seen them. The next time that black people come down to show some support for black people for one of their colleagues, you ain't gotta don't be scared of your own people. Just don't be scared of your own people. Cause it's like if you scared, they know. Right? Yeah. Don't be scared of your own people. It's like we wasn't there for them. We was there for we was there for all of y'all. Because if it would have happened to any single one of them, any one of them, we would not have accepted it, right? So yeah. if they don't want us coming back down there, then they better, he bet, well, he ain't coming back no way, though, because he already was doing his thing. Like, uh, yeah, I think, after, does he have an opponent? Because we might have to send some cars out there. I think so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, let me tell you this, Representative. Um, if there is anything that we, if you ever can be, if we can ever be of assistance, then let us know. Uh, I plan to be back down in Springfield a little bit more often now as well. So, hey, help a brother out because you know, office. <laughs> I, I, I need a, I need a place because you know I'm trying to come back and get back in the game. I've been out for so long. It's like I'm trying to. It, there was a, an exhilarating feeling that I had walking in that Capitol. Um, and then to see all them black lobbyists where I used to be up there and there was none. Um, and to know that black people could have our back, right? We ain't got to be down there by ourselves. So look, Representative Collins, what you got is the summertime. So, hey, uh, can we count on you to be one of our black people first members on the uh, West Side? You gonna help me I charter this chapter? At the beginning. I told okay, you so that I, I want to be a part of it. All right, so well, you're going to be a leader of it because we got to get us a West Side chapter together. Uh, so, look, I'm going to reach out to you, and we're going to get that started because the summertime and then, you know, you got a campaign. So since you got a campaign going on, it'll be perfect have, time. Well, I do have campaign. Well, I'm on the polls, um, but I'm so still the, knocking doors. And I'm I know, so you're going to you gonna build your mob up then. We're going to build us a West Side mob, and then you're going to have your team, and we're going to be straight. Look, y'all, it is Representative Collins. Hey, what, what big legislation, what you got? What did you tell the district? Because you're from the West Side, you know what I'm saying? So what did you do? You got anything so, good? What's your big one? <laughs> it's a lot of things that I've done. Um, I'm really proud of a couple of initiatives that I personally introduced off um, reforming DCFS. That's a big thing. Um, especially with the fact that we have a high percentage of black, you know, youth in there who are just sitting there um, with no placement or being re-traumatized. And so um, that's something that I'm really proud of this session, the relief um, within the budget that we were able to pass. I feel like we could do a whole lot more, but I think we could probably just talk and dissect that um, at another time. Um, 
yeah, like I said, I'm unopposed. I'm very grateful for that. I want to continue to do the work that I've been doing since I got in. I want to continue to build on the West Side. Um, and I want to continue to be accessible to folks. I don't want this to just be like, oh, she's new. Um, and that's why she's doing all of these things. No, this is who I am. And I truly care about the work that I'm doing. And so I will be out there for other candidates, your wife, because I am going to have that conversation with her. Um, and then continue to do this work with you all. All right. That's what I'm it's talking about. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah. Well, we with you, right? It's like, and if we want to forge more alliances like this. Like, sisters need to know, and I'm going to tell y'all, you know, be, people be talking about black women unprotected. I disagree. I just think mm -hmm. we got to talk to the right Negroes. Um, and I think <laughs> we are the right Negroes. So, hey, sis, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you for uh, joining us. And, man, thank you for being such a hospitable uh, hostess for us in Springfield. Next time we come, uh, you better tell the Black Caucus they got to open up the Black Caucus house. Uh, I'm going to have to get us, we're going to get us a whole little thing. We might stay, we might have a three-day lobbying situation because you should have said, I think, I think after we lobbied, uh, rep, after we represent, uh, lobbied the Durkin, I think we could have got the Republicans to sponsor anything we wanted. They was like, just get out of the office, please. Please just Look, leave. Please. The Black Caucus house, we're, um, we're remodeling that. So Tiffany Hightower. Who is the high tower? Who is the executive director of our Black Caucus Foundation? Is looking to do some renovations. So once that's done, come on now, y'all welcome. All right, there it is. Hey y'all, this is State Representative Lakeisha Collins. Uh, she is the reason we went to Springfield. We had to set them out, let them know we wasn't having it. Uh, and just so any of y'all feeling froggy out there. Do not jump, because we will be back down now. Hey, y'all, this is the Mace Jackson Show. Reese, I know we're a little bit early. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to come back. Uh, Representative, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much for being with us today. Look, y'all, this is the Mace Jackson Show. We'll be back. The Mace Jackson Show. We'll be back after this break. I love being black. The skin of men fit me fine, chain of me, yeah, I'm comfortable. Yeah, I'm comfortable. And so it seems I'm still chasing my dreams. They told me, watch my steps, they want to pull the rug from under you. Money. This is transparency, my life 3D. You Live every word that I utter, reporting live from the gutter. Where well, the mind's hard to change, but we don't give up on our brothers and sisters. Cause we all need one another. The time's getting closer. Revolution, feel it coming. I can smell it in the air. Inhale it, let it embody you. Because chances are the cops will you over they body you. Cause we don't trust each other, so there's just another obstacle Why jump hurdles to make a change, it ain't optional Olympian mindset in this booth with my binoculars I see my vision getting clear, just as what a prophet do My music touch the people's soul, black power gospel team So many styles, watch me kick them like they soccer moves Falling rank and file, this is my platoon Soldiers at attention, ain't no willy lynching This the program, who they think they kidding Reinvent the system, total reconstruction of our mental stigma This ain't a game, boy, still they think I'm talking about Nintendo. That's a shame, boy. Augment reality. Better fix your brain, boy. I love my people. Hope they love me black. I'm going hard and ain't no holding back. Watch me react. I put my fist up in the skies. Like a beacon for believers that one day we return to our greatest city. We seek it all the glory. We can obtain it. Keep reaching. Keep reaching. I'm painting this picture. I hope you see it. Just what the theme is. I love being black. We turning up. I love being black. Say it loud. Man, I love being black.
turning up. Why I love being black. Say it loud, man. I love being black. One more time. I love being black. Hey. You are listening to the Maze Jackson Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my man, DJ Reese, the rule on the ones and twos. Um, it is, yes, the Maze Jackson Show. Um, So I want to open up the phone lines. I want to talk about um, Ray Lopez. I want to talk about Willie Wilson. I want to talk about his chances to win. I'm also trying to decide um, if I, I told y'all that white Karen was coming. Um, I told you that the moment that there was the presumption or the assumption that there could be black unity, black power, black power meeting of the minds. That they would come. I didn't know they would come this quick. But they come. So, yeah, I'm a, I got to do a little thinking and then I'm going to decide whether I'm going to talk to y'all about it. To, I'm not going to talk about it today. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. Um, but in this space where I advocate for black people. And black economics. There are. Ang- I have been in, in times angered. Progressive white women who feel that. They are the only people that can make money. They are the only people that have the right to participate. Um. And I, and I, I quite honestly, I take offense. And so, to the white publicist that decided that you were going to try me. We're going to open it up. See, I'm not going, you're not going to scare me. Um, It's always crazy to watch the white women who purport to support black women try to undercut them when they don't do what they say. So I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit later, but um. I think it's important that we recognize the timing of what is happening right now and what will be happening over the next few months. And so I'm going to just tell my soldiers that we are ready. We're going to have to get ready for some war and war games. Let me also say um, black women, I'm going to need some aid and assist. Because you know when the white women decide that they're going to put the black man under. They usually try to get a lynching going. So I. I think we need to make sure. That we sit down and we have a conversation. Because I'm going to be. I'm going to be honest with you. Right. See. The way that they have operated in the past. Is that there is an existing network of white progressives who operate in a self-righteous manner but do as much damage and harm to try and hurt black folks when they are not submissive or do not bow down. And I will not bow down. As I have said on numerous occasions, black opportunities for black people are just that. So 
if if you're a fence, because four years ago I told you that I shouldn't get a press release from the Black Caucus from a white woman, and you have held that, and so you decide that you want to go and try and create stories, well, sis, I'm going to tell you I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not. I'm going to name check you. And all the places that you get to operate, we're going to be right there with you. See, I'm, I have decided that I will not be a victim. I will not. I refuse to be a victim. Um, so, Madam White Publicist, you opened it up. We shall continue. But I told y'all, you know that part of this game is they've been trying to draw me in, <laughs> right? They've been trying to draw me in. They're trying to... Trying to make me blow. You know how the, the answer is. Make him blow is cool. I don't want the white lady to be comfortable no more though. She shouldn't just be able to walk through the black neighborhoods like that. Right? Not without having the answer. You don't get to just pretend. There isn't. Don't make me. Hmm. So I'm going to just tell my sisters. Right? That hell hath no fury like a white progressive woman who ran into a real black man who is unabashed about his ability. You ain't my, I don't need you. You ain't no benevolent. You, because you help somebody black, don't mean that you get to walk around and be like, we all, we. So, and I'm going to tell you, a lot of people were telling me, man, Mays, you should, you should um, bow down to her. She's going to use all the, she's going to, she's going to, she has all the press relationships. So the, the white media is going to. One of the things that I've always tried to do is be honest with you all. Um, so, to me, white people feel like they get to operate with impunity in our black communities. And then try to play stupid like they didn't have anything to do with it. Now, I know who it is, and we know who you are. And it is amazing to me I used to, hey, Reese, it's a song in there, it's by Cool in the Game called Joanna. See if you can get me get it under underneath. So I'm going to tell y'all I'm um, going starting now I'm going to be under full on assault by white liberal woman who is upset because I said that black opportunities should be created for black people. With black companies. Um, Y'all remember that? Like five years ago. Four years ago. I got a press release that told me about black people. What black people needed to do from the black caucus. And it told me to call a white lady. If I had questions. How dare I question her. She has all the black friends. Do you know how many black people I've helped in my life? This is my right. I am not going to apologize for my blackness. And I think what is so funny is to watch these punks put this, try to make a mockery of what's in it for the black people. 
try to make a mockery of the work that I have done. Do you understand what it takes for somebody to hire me in this environment? And it's funny that they tried to make a mockery of my... So, I just want to make sure that we're not going to play hide the hand games. And I think if you want to play the game, then let's just be clear what you just opened up. Um, I refuse to let my story be told by white people. I refuse. And everybody tried to be like, Maze, I refuse to let my story be told by white people. Because, yeah. So I, I just want to open up the phone lines. Uh, I'm going to break this down uh, for you all tomorrow because I'm still kind of digesting it. It's like it just is crazy to me that the concept that I can't be smart enough to do a deal. That we can't be smart enough, that we have to be, that there, that we, that black people can't work out, negotiate a deal without the help of white people who have decided that they got to get a piece. So tomorrow we're going to talk a little bit more, but I want to talk today about what happened. Give us a call, 872-259-7474. Willie Wilson running. Um, you got Ray Lopez in the race. I just want to know what y'all think. And then I wanna um I wanna I wanna talk. It's the Maze Jackson show. Caller, you on the live line. What's up? Hey, good morning, bro. Good morning, James. How you feeling, you man? I can hear you. What's up, big James? Feel, I'm good, man. Feel. I'm good. I'm good. I, hey, look, man, I I'm I'm just gonna keep it real, man. Um I was on hold when, when um, Alderman Ray Lopez was on your uh, on your show, and to be honest, I was ready to call in and tear into this guy, man. You know, because you you already know how I feel about him. You know, I see him on, on Fox News when I actually a, a few times, man. You know, he's just your guy, man. And I didn't call him snakes and all types of you know unpleasurable things, but to, to, to hear his stance when, when you ask him a question, he's a question about. Um, Undocumented immigrants, and and he brought in his stance on ADOs and, and contracts. I was kind of I was kind of surprised. I, I mean, a lot you can't get black politicians uh, to answer to be forward with that with their answer without going all around and coming, you know, trying to justify why they got to feel this way or you know, we it's about everybody. But he was point blank in his answer, and and the thing about um, set aside when it comes to the gay community, I was. Really surprised, honestly, I'll, on his stance when it comes to. So, James, I'm gonna say this. Right? Hello, I'm here. I'm here. I'm gonna tell you. Um, oh, oh, okay. I, so it's weird because I know that don't keep, you keep them, keep them, don't hang up on them. Um, it's okay. like I know that every like I got inboxes, people calling me, cursing out uh, Ray Lopez, saying he done taken. You know, I got all of that. But I got to tell you, like, some of the stuff he says to me is true. And I I, I, I was trying Absolutely. to see if he was pandering. But he was so direct with the white male. Like, he's, I feel like he also listens to, um, he listens to the show so he know what to say. But I do feel like Absolutely. to put that on record to say you're not for undocumented immigrants. Yeah, exactly. And people watching who going to exactly. clip it and say it. And then for him to go right. at the, he said more than any black person probably could say he, and you are absolutely right and so and when i want to tell him you know the reason the reason why a station like a fox news continuously has him on is because he sits their narrative in his thinking you know but when he when you ask him them, them questions i was really surprised i mean he didn't dance around the question you know he, he stood his ground and like i said it's a lot of black politicians that would never take that stance to a question like that, and for him to, to take that stance in the gay community, I was—I must say—I was—I was surprised, man. Honestly, so yeah, 
He, he blew me when he said, what's the test? That's when he blew me when yeah. he said, what is the test? All right, y'all. Uh, yeah. Thanks, James. Okay, bro. I appreciate you. It's the Maze Jackson Show. We got anybody on the live line? Call or give us a call, 872 uh, What do you think about the show today? Ray Lopez, uh, he said some pretty bold stuff. I know y'all feel a certain way. You know, some people say he be dog whistling, but he did not waffle on two of our issues. And he's actually, did you see this dude had a law, had already proposed a 88 uh, ordinance? Okay. Caller, what you got? Shalom, shalom. Had to call back again. What up, Israel? Um, You said something about the white lady trying to control you. You're talking about black people can't think for themselves. Uh-huh. They go back to slavery and their Sunday worship. You know, slavery, black people couldn't have church on Sunday without a white man in the midst. Did you know that? I did not. Okay, black things ain't no man. That's what I'm trying to. That's why I'm just giving you milk slowly but surely. I ain't. I ain't gonna. Over, I ain't gonna force no T-bone steak down your mouth. Black things you didn't know. I understand. And uh, a, a good friend of mine, Commissioner Stanley Moore, told me that a while ago when they were proposing that um LGP stuff. He said, "How can you prove you that?" Man, but you gotta go work under the desk and put it on camera. Hey, that's the game they running on. Hey, is huh? real. You, you went, I'm just keeping it real. I'm finna, I'm finna give you some chopstick. I ain't gonna give you tea bone yet. <laughs> I you can take it with the milk. All right, there it is. That's you the, do know. You do. Israel, that's two days in a row he done got me. He got me back twice. Y'all, man, I just feel like... Um, I, I, now, I, I bet you you asked. I, if Willie wasn't in the race... Would you even consider Lopez? Ray, I, Reese, Reese, would you, if Willie wasn't in the race, would you consider Lopez? When you listen to him, would you have even considered him? Oh, yeah, man. He has some real good Reese, stuff. We know Reese, but you're you really still good. back in the slave catcher. Uh, nah, nah, man. He told you, man. I'm, I'm for different, man. I told you. I need to, you know, I mean, you hire the wrong people in there. So, you uh, know, uh, he was talking good, but, you know, I'm definitely for Willie. He got my, he got my coach already. Willie Wilson, he going to be here tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Reese, you think he going to bring us breakfast? Probably oh, not. He probably know. gonna just he be like eat these dollars. Oh, hey, take man. some of this money. <laughs> you know what? That's fine. <laughs> I, I buy my own damn breakfast. I couldn't buy y'all lunch, but here's a hundred dollars. You make sure y'all all eat good. You right, Willie? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so I know it's a lot of people that don't like Ray Lopez, but I feel like uh, I What? You, th- this is the problem with Negroes, right? Like white folks have just throw some. Sh- you, I, you know what? That's this is exactly why I be tripping on y'all. Give us a call eight seven two two five nine seven four seven four. Is there another call up there? Call you on the Maze Jackson show. Good morning, Maze. Enjoy the show so far. My name is Diane Young, and hey, Diane. I'm commenting, I'm not saying that Ray Lopez didn't mean what he said while he was on your show, but as the saying goes, you can make your mouth say anything. That's my comment. Okay. I mean, I feel like that could be a, um, I feel like that can be a, um, you could be suspect. I feel like people are suspect of him, but I just don't know that you come on and say Eidos. I don't know that you just come on and say you can my, like I I don't I don't know that I put that uh I don't know that Ados is something you gotta know about that. Well give us a call, eight seven two two five nine seven four seven four. What's up? Call you on the Maze Jackson show. Oh, now why I got? I'm just saying, Willie Wilson. I don't know, man. I just think like this, man. I see Willie Wilson getting the black vote. Have you all heard that Mike Quigley is getting in the race? I think Mike Quigley is planning on getting in the race. I think he takes the north side and splits it with the mayor. I don't know where Ray Lopez gets his votes. Hey, let me ask y'all a question. Did y'all hear about the church in um, 
Oak Park Reese, that banned whiteness for Lent. They they fasted on whiteness for Lent. And now they had to close the church because he got threats. I did see that. I didn't think it was real. It, it was. So, well, like the church, let me see. Let me read the story real quick. Uh, ooh. The Oak Park Church of first, the first United Church of Oak Park. Reese, they passed. Um... They took a fast on whiteness. So basically what they said they were doing was for the whole month, for for all of Lent, they were only going to play music from people of color. So no more white hymns, so no amazing grace, so no victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Reese, can I ask you? Could there be church without white people? And I also want to ask, um, can we have black only spaces? Can we have a black only place where you, and if it's black only doesn't mean you can't bring nobody white or doesn't mean you have to come with somebody black. And do we get to treat the white people like they get? Do we get to look at them and be like and turn off the music and make them feel uncomfortable and make them wait longer? And and could we charge like could we charge them automatic gratuity? Shouldn't be getting in. Huh? I can't get in. So can we have a black social club with only black people? That's it. Is it black only? Or is it black people first? Then I guess. But if you got a black only. Can you do a black so? It was funny. I had a white guy call me and say he wanted to buy my jacket. He asked Robin Patrice, just so you know, I had a rich white guy offer me $1,000 for my jacket because he wanted to walk around with a, a jacket that had Black King on it. Would you have sold it to him, Reese? Stack. A million. Stack. Stack cash right there. Nah. You think if we had a black only club, white people would make it their business to come? To try and get in, it's gonna be somebody that gotta prove you know that somebody that gotta be. You know, it's a Tommy in out there everywhere trying. So, to. but let me ask the question: Could you tell someone, "I'm sorry, you can't go because it's black only"? Yes. Would you tell your friend, "Man, I'm sorry, you can't go"? That's the exactly moment. I'm sorry, bro. This is black only, and when you fill out your job, you know you you, you don't put in African American or black. You know, so it's not a, you know, like. It's if, if it's called black only, it's, it's black. If only. it's black only, I feel like white people will make it their business to have to be able to prove that they can get in. And what does? How do you say you can't? You see the name? What if the name ain't black only though? That's what I'm talking about. Can to you say. post it? So if it say black, can, see now black people first is different because I believe white person can join black people first because it say black people first. So it's a nah, party. white people can't. The rules yeah. say the black white people. You could be a part of the affiliate. You could donate. No, but. To say like, you know, blacks only, and then you put some, you know, put put another race in there. You know, then then it start you start slowly, you know, creeping up in there. You know, then he bring his all me home, man. You know, Dan is he's all right too. You know, and then you got you know Bill. Bill's coming in, you know, and now you seeing and you know, and now, and now they knowing. So you, you got to stick to it, stick to it. Like I, everybody always call and say, black people the only race that I always try to you know. How attach. much? How much would you join a black only members cl- members only club? I would. How much would you pay monthly? Would you pay if Depending you knew there was a doing. if you knew it was a place that it was a safe space you could have your meetings if you needed to if you just wanted to go sit down and you know it's bring your own you can't buy nothing but you could bring your own. Can sit there. You can watch the games. We can have conversations and discussions. Would you participate in a black only social club? And would you pay a monthly fee to maintain it? Yeah, I mean, people join social club. It's all about what the club will have to like offer. Like what? So. What do you do? What social club you you know about social clubs? What social club you been to? 
Um, I forgot their name, but I used to go to like this girl. Like, actually, Toy was in a social club, so I used to go like. I believe Toy was in the, was Toy it was the, in the, the Spirit the, Airlines uh, social club. I, I don't know what it was. And Toy ball headed now. See, I ain't even seen my co-host. I she got, cut I, her I, hair off. I was <laughs> like, Toy, you what happened to your hair? Hey man, but no, nah, I don't like so. Yeah, so like I have to see. So t- in order for me to pay, like a, a what do you need? It depends. So if I'm going, if I'm going for something like a black only or something like that, and I'm looking for a, a space like that, um, I'm actually looking for some knowledge out of it. So like I'm, like I really want to pay for a space to just hang out and kick it. Like monthly, I probably if that, if that was the case, I probably would come and pay. Every time I come in there, but if it was like a space and where we was like doing things and doing like stuff in the community and, you know, educating the youth and, you know, trying to build like, you know, I would help, you know, fund that because we actually trying to do something that's going to help grow us in, in like the long run instead of like growing just a, like a Pacific facility or something like that. If you get like what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but no, yeah, but like I would go like if it was still a place, I probably would just go. I probably wouldn't pay like a monthly fee to just sit and chill or do something. But but I would, I would still attend. But if it was like one of them, you know, like uh, kind of like how we did like chapter or something. So it was like a goal, and we you know did something like that. But you probably didn't go go to every party. You know, you were like you know I ain't going to every party. You know, what would attract you to a black? only social club what would it need to have um events panels um i was thinking about what it would take to make a black only social club a place where we could go you know i'm tired of going to the soho it's like it's really great networking there and it's really great but i just be like golly it is like carried out and, and that's another thing so like events like that, you know, you can have a, a black only way in that in that space. Y'all have like a networking day, stuff like that. That's good. You know, that's something that people can pay for because you never know. You may be paying a hundred dollar membership, but then you end up linking with a hundred million dollar person. So, like, I can see that. I can see if it's if it's in that direction. Okay. Y'all be steady, Charlie. Snap on the bros, don't y'all? Y'all steady be trying to go in on the bros. It just be hilarious to me. It's like I just got through telling you about a black and you like so I can create this space and you, and your your answer is again, I didn't say five beta six. I said a black only club. Mine. Ours. Half the reason Negroes can't get nowhere is because they want to prove you wrong before they just listen to the opportunity. I mean, it's but but I, I understand it's like I feel like we feel like th- that is the reason why you go where black people are not a lot of times in in business I have oftentimes learned to go where black people are not because the Negroes are gonna spend more time trying to prove you wrong than the white folks trying to outdo each other look we trying to I'm trying to win so I could be putting the whole thing together that said black only, and that could be part of my issue. But what you want to do is bring in my fraternity. Because I can't be, you know, I swear to God, boy, that's y'all, y'all be wanting to divide Negroes more than you want to build. Go to the phone. It's the Maze Jackson show. What's up, Carl? Hey, what's going on, Dave Maze? What's up? Who there? I first want to say, I, this is Vince, man. What's up, Vince? I first want to say, I am Team Willie all the way. But okay. this dude, Lopez, today, the things he said today is amazing. I don't know if we can trust him, but <laughs> man, he said this on record. Is it real? I know I'm going to be playing it back. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that. Uh, I know it's gonna be in Reese's promo. It's gonna be in Reese's promo this week, talking about he gonna have him a whole hey, commercial. Do you support? No. <laughs> hey man, you better send him the uh, to the Flannery. Send him the Flannery. <laughs> <laughs> he snapped off, right? He just like no. Woo! Hey, and he man. said no dreamers either. It was crazy. That was that ain't none of our black politicians say that not one time. That, they can't though. You know, black politicians say they be like they're radical. So, so how is he saying? 
Uh, cause, cause white folks get free. <laughs> I, bet. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the call. Anybody else on that line? Black only. All right. So you look, I'm thinking about, we need a black only space where we can have black only conversations. And then, Hey y'all. So Joanna wants to play. Right. And she want to throw rocks and hide her hand. So I'm a, I'm going to tell you that old Joanna, we should, we should start looking at Joanna. We should start, you know, it's like, again, I think when white folks think they have a comfort level because they, they think they the good white folks and can walk in and walk through the black folks and be like, you can, you can come in and be disrespectful and then try and be cool because you. Because you friends with somebody? No, nah, it don't work that way. So if you want to come on this side of the line, welcome to it. It's the Maze Jackson Show. Look, Reese, we got to get up out of here. So for Maze and Reese, sometimes Ruthie, I am the host of the Maze Jackson Show, where every single day we ask the question, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. Maze said we out of here. Peace. Let's get down to business and go ahead and address the facts. Man, life foot seems more lesbian than black. Rama Manuel was another case. He was just a tire. 50 closed schools left much to be desired. Police had internet naked on that body cam. They suppressed the footage so it couldn't touch a lot of hands. Reminds me of that 16 shots in that cover up. Both of them similar, so I went and dug it up. George Floyd killed, a lot of riots happened in the town. Southside burned and they wouldn't let them bridges down. Grandmother sick, need a prescription and plus a couple groceries. You gon' have to travel just to get it now COVID-19, now his shit ain't all the business down Not enough SBA loans to even give a round So many failed businesses that you can put them in the path If you don't survive the pandemic, it's gon' sit you down We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes Government invested black neighborhoods with crack smoke System to milk is so bad, we got lactose Still trying to find out what's in it for us black folks We sing, dance, play ball, entertain, and crack jokes Government invested black neighborhoods with crack smoke System to milk is so bad we got lactose Still trying to find out What's in it for us black folks Shout out to Willie Wilson Hope one day you get to send it We need some different players In the gang to handle business you know, Too many shady characters Like Madigan and Blago But when you really break it down It's typical Chicago City full of gangsters It's what the land was built on Same streets with hood legends DNA get spilled on Carjackers out here